Welcome to Serial Podcast 9. How's everyone? Good. I am well. How are you? All right. Fine, I suppose. Just drinking a zombie surprise smoothie sour. I think you'd like banana it. It tastes coconut. like a banana cream pie. I don't it like came from Righteous cream. Garage. Stuff. It, it's it's like a dessert in your mouth. There's a lot is. of words there, yeah. Sounds like a very non-beer. Yeah, it's pretty non-beery, but it is quite delicious. Yeah, how was that mm. Oreo one, too? Because it's like, to me, same thing. I was like, I got it, and then I was like, I'm not going to drink this, man. It's just like, this is too far from beer for me. Yeah, uh, it's like super duper non-beer beer. What, the stout with Oreo cookies in it? Yeah. From Superflux? Yeah. I feel like it's still beer. Yeah. I mean, well, beer these days like sweet loose. I think smoothie beers are... I would say when you go to like juice box sours and like these smooth smoothie beers, they're further away, a little bit further away from. I beers. like sours, man. Sours, are yeah, but fun. those are kind of just like juice. All those ones, you know, like those backcountry ones, are kind of like juice. And I love them, but they're just kind of like juice. You're they're great. Juice. Yeah, it, I got the juice, juice now. Do you remember that Tupac Shakur movie called Juice? Juice, yeah, for sure. Yeah, you got the juice now. Anyway, let's start the podcast. All right. Hello, I'm Kevin from Podcast, and this is Serial Nine. Okay. I like a, oh my God. Do a real thing. I'm Gerard Di Peralta. And I'm Kevin Peterson. And we are Serial Nine. And this is. And I'm Ryan Benoit. <laughs> We we missed a week and now we're all screwed up. We're this is Serial silly. Podcast Nine. Yeah. Yep. Podcast. Yep. It there is. we are. Serial podcast nine. Podcast. Yeah, Episode. It's, what's it? What's its face? It's season three. Welcome to twenty twenty three. Season three. Yep. Oh man, what three. happens in season three? Do you think we jump the shark? <laughs> it's possible. Jump the what? Jump the shark. The shark. It's a Fonzie reference. And yeah, that's still. when happy, happy days. days stopped. Stopped be go- becoming relevant. It was like after that the show was bad because oh Arthur Fonzarelli jumped a jumped a shark on a surfboard. Oh, and so I think now it was, water, a TV it was show, water skis. Oh, water skis! Yeah, and yeah. He was wearing a leather and, uh, jacket as he always does, but yeah, yeah. It's basically a symbol for when you've just gone too far and you can't yeah. do, do anything more. I got it. Yeah, I got it. I yeah. Got it. Well, we weren't. I wasn't sure. Jordan. I mean, it is I from your era. Sure. <laughs> Yeah, you're happy days. Yeah, yeah. You're a real, you're a real potsy, you know. All right, all happy right. Love, so, love. Is it? Is was he bad? Uh, it doesn't matter. Nobody, literally, yeah. nobody, literally, to nobody knows what, is gonna care. Knows what happy days is. Maybe, uh, some, even, even maybe someone's listening young. with their, their their dad. Happy days yeah. is remote, like marginally fucking funny. Happy days is like friends. Like why whatever. are you we were gonna stop talking about it and now you've continued talking about it okay remember when weezer made a video and it had happy days it was like based on happy days no longer talking about it okay cool yeah i, I, I don't <laughs> want to talk about weezer at all so. yeah oh really okay kevin hates weezer does he yeah know. sounds like it <laughs> yeah no, man, no they, okay I, I the reason i hate weezer is like because they're sweater yeah. Yeah, they're the epitome of that like whiny, whiny sound. And then also for some reason, I remember I got like a new PC and it had their music video like in the PC, like from the factory. Which music video? I swear it was the sweater one. Destroyed my sweater. Because this was like the time when the PC had like the pinball game. You know? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. I don't know if we can use any of that, but it's very no, interesting. Let's not. I'm going to now because you <laughs> double dog dared me. All right. Hey, it's the new year. What are we up to? We are yeah, trying to make 2023 better than 2022 at zero nine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What does that even mean? Drew? Yeah, that seems like a generic answer. I mean, we're trying to improve our sales. We're trying, Aren't to, trying to improve every improve year? production. We're trying to, am I what? Aren't we trying to improve every year? Yeah, but I mean, like 2022. 2022 was a difficult year financially for like the world. The world. And we're you want to do you want to do an economics uh, podcast? No, I don't. We're just lucky that we came <laughs> out on top of 2022. That's all. That's all I want to say. Yeah, that's good. 
I think for fun, you should try one year to do a worse job than you did. Like on purpose. no, we've done that. We've done that already a long time ago. Yeah, you times. purposely tried to do a worse no, job. Like no, you just, no. You just don't need uh, to. Oh, what was the? Why would you? Why, yeah, you're not gonna purposely try to do a worse job. Well, I'm saying. I mean, it is that is funny see. though. Yeah. Yeah. How bad, I feel how like bad of a job you could do. Isn't that like the George Cassandra thing to do like everything opposite of what you feel? Hey, no, and maybe no, no Seinfeld, no friends, all right, no all right, all right. No, that's just because every decision he ever makes is wrong. So he's like, if I do the opposite, of I everything. feel like that. Didn't I say like, yeah. didn't I say that when I was trying to design that thing for you? And I was like, oh, if I just do the opposite of it's everything, of everything I, I thought, yeah, was right for design. Yeah. Anyway, that's great. Um, hey, what was the worst year serial nine ever had? Oh no, man! There was a lot of worst years. The beginning was the worst years. Every year is better than the last. I mean, it, I mean, no, be, I, before I feel like we figured like, out how to be a goddamn business, it was all bad. It was all shit. Mm, and right, we're luckily, yeah. luckily, young enough that it didn't really matter if it was shit <laughs> or not. So, uh, the COVID year was like crazy good, though. Yeah, the yeah, COVID year was probably insane. But, I think that's um, the same for everything, right? Like everything. I feels like like you, you either soared through COVID or you like really got sick, you know? Yeah. Like if you were a restaurant that didn't know how to do takeout like, delivery, yeah, yeah, takeout, you were fucked. But yeah. Yeah. all the tech sectors were hiring like crazy, and then that was the opposite. Yeah, and like work after. from home became a huge thing. And like, but yeah. yeah. But yeah, so that year was super great. And then 2021 was also very good and then 2022 was less good but still still better than 2021 yeah oh yeah cool Mm -hmm. good hey good job you guys you really thank you you're out there doing it um i have questions because we haven't had a podcast where we could ask questions in like over a month and they've been a while yeah i mean one thing I just want to say, I mean, I'm sure you kind of feel the same way, is like we should maybe just quickly touch on the subject that Ken Block has passed away. And yeah, that's we like can a start with kind that. of a big, big fucking deal. Like, kind it of really sucks. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we can. That's a real downer to start on. But it is. It's a big <laughs> deal. I mean, what yeah, do you... definitely like current events, but might not be so current by the time this is out. But yeah. I yeah. don't know if it's I still, think it'll like, still yeah. be relevant. Everlastingly I think current. It is a very, it's a very sad thing. Uh, yeah, it's pretty, yeah. pretty like, like shocking too. It's, you know what I mean? It was like just all of a sudden it sort of spread through the internet. Like, oh hey, like Ken Block yeah. died. Like what? I don't like. I don't. I don't know if we're gonna have any like disagreeing like about the levity of it. He was yeah. obviously an icon in the car community uh he i made a post about it on dota logic and i I said my thing i i do think that regardless you know everybody into cars i feel could find something that they appreciated about ken block whether it was the cars that he drove the content that he was part of producing and if you don't you're kind of probably just a hater i'm sure like because of dc and like that whole like mtv skateboarding thing he probably got more people into skateboarding than like yeah since like the since tony hawk you know like um, yeah like yeah to have founded dc and hoonigan is like yeah those are yeah. both like crazy companies to have, yeah you know, it's like no to have anything to have done with <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, and i think even acknowledging that is un- like an understanding of like the amount that he contributed to the car scene <sighs> I've done a lot of like, I've seen a lot of like neat things in the car scene. I've been around for a while and I've done some like, been around some like pretty cool stuff, I think, that like, I don't know, gets my motor going, I guess. But the one thing that was like, the, if I try to explain Final Bout to like a normie, it doesn't really make sense. You know, like there's a long conversation having to explain everything. Uh, the one thing that I could say that like, kind of was the easiest thing to explain to people about well you know like the world that i kind yeah. of sometimes get to exist in is like oh i've i was lucky enough to like wander onto set of jim Kana in san francisco or shoot ken block at grc and like people that i don't think would even know anything about cars were like yeah i know him 
I know that thing. Yeah. And it was like the easiest like exchange to kind of explain. And I think there is that, like there was just a mass appeal of it. Like DC made obviously because he fun- found, helped found it and stuff, but like you could buy Ken Block shoes and Ken Block clothes yeah. and like, that's not yeah, a- like West 49th and like zoomies and like, yeah, that's what I mean. It's like you buy like Hoonigan zip ties and stuff like at the mall. Like that's yeah, yeah. It's like, so, just like that's you might like not like Hoonigan, absolutely but like if you Hoonigan, it'd be fr- it'd, you'd be crazy. Like like zero nine zip ties at Zoomies would be fucking insane. You know what I mean? That's yeah. what I mean. It's like you're so shoes. you're so ingrained in the pop culture, like at that point, you know? Yeah. yeah, and like I posted that stuff, and I had people that I didn't think like would say anything. Like we're reached out. And well, dude, like, oh, like man, when I saw like, when I saw you post that shit, I was like, what? Like, is it like this? This is you were here, like. Yeah. And then like I that mean, video of like where like he's like trolling your friend. Like <laughs> Yeah, that was great. That was yeah. cuz like early on I was like I don't know how to feel about it cuz he was like a subi guy and then I met him at SEMA one year and we like <laughs> full on we had like a camera and we just like kind of stuck a phone in his hand and we're like can you phone our friend cuz our friend like adored <laughs> him and was yeah. and always swore up and down that the WRX he was like, no, was you're like, like supposed to buy a WRX and not an STI and build the WRX. So like the WRX is way better and, and all these things and you make it better. And yeah. we got Ken Block to call him and be like, hey, man, it's Ken Block, kind of like your idol. And yeah. he totally bought the wrong car. And <laughs> our friend loved it. Like I hadn't spoken to him in years and he like reached out. He's like, oh, I'm like, you know, like that's one of such a great memory for me. And. Honestly, after Ken Block yeah, did no that, doubt. I went, I went and bought his shoes. After I was like, "Oh, Ken Block's is dope!" Like, like he didn't have to, he didn't have to do that, and he didn't have to be that way. And he totally like was just really cool about it. So, and then being into media, like it was always a kind of a treat to be in and around things that he was doing because it felt like the legitimacy he brought to the car world. It was like you kind of. We're just trying to get a little piece of that. So you're like, it's oh, man. Creme I, creme, you know what I mean? That's yeah. like the upper echelon of anything that anybody's really trying to do. Which is like, great. Like, he was man. even beyond Hoonigan already. You know what I mean? Like he like found it, but like he wasn't there. He was like, just like owned it and like used the Hoonigan name to make even crazier shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's wild. Cool. And then, you know, the other thing that you start to think about is like, all the people that he brought along and gave work to and introduced into the scene. And like, it's tragic for his family. Obviously I can't even imagine what it would be like to pass away at a fairly young age and like leave Mm -hmm. your kids, you know, like fatherless. Um, But on then even on top of that, just like the amount of people in, in the car scene that he gave opportunities to is, Mm -hmm. is astronomical like what you start i was reading some of the posts and a lot of the guys that i look up to and arguably even if you're gonna be kind of like uh i don't know what the word would be like a a a counterist is that it i don't know if you're counter it just for the sake of it there's probably somebody that's attached to something that ken block has done that you have a ton of some respect for yeah 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 like all the big names were like yo yeah like Jay Leno (laughs) yeah well even like looking at it it was like the amount of people that were just sharing like Larry Chen's photos yeah Larry Chen the levity of that Shreve Rogi Hurt like all those people and they all kind of said like we owe we owe something to this guy and I think that's great because those are all great talents in our scene directly Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that that were elevated by somebody else so yeah it's a huge loss uh, I don't know. I really don't know what else to say about it other than that. Yeah, I mean that's that's pretty much it. There's nothing. Let's pour one out, and he's a legend. And, you know, watch some videos. I don't know. Yeah, sucks. All that's right, we got questions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's see. This one's an easy one. We'll start with this one. Dash to Jay Z. He said, "Hello, Mr. Ryan." I have a question slash topic for future podcast episodes. Would the team at Serial 9 ever consider making suspension parts for the second gen IS XE20? Yes. Model. Yeah, like they do for the first. Yeah, yeah. Thank, 
anyway, you get the response idea. It's Andrew C. Um, so yeah, would you ever make parts for that that car? Yeah, we yes. sort of are doing that ish. Yeah, that's yes. the same same as the 18 crown, which I have. And we have a bunch of the arms already designed. There's people with that vehicle who have adapted current arms we already make onto those vehicles. That is uh hopefully coming out in 2023. It should be. But yeah. There you there you yes. go, Andrew C. Big time. So yeah. You heard it here first. You heard it here first. Yeah, I feel like we've actually answered that before. And that is fine. It's good to reiterate. And the mm-hmm. whole reason Kevin yes. bought that that crown was because it was cheap parts and it was yeah. cheap. Why he bought it. it's a slow crown he needed, that was he needed an instant gratification so he got that by purchasing <laughs> items yeah it's just cars. <laughs> Makes it feel filling good the void with consumer goods exactly. um perfect okay we're here for yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um all right next question by jn.miata i know how much Jared loves miata yeah miata. said hey sh- Hey, Ryan, wasn't sure where to submit a question for the podcast, but I thought since you're the host, I'd ask you. You thought right. All right. I'd love to hear about what kind of media, like YouTube, movies, magazines, uh, (coughs) whatever, all that stuff, influence the group and what the group is currently watching and reading. Thanks. All right. I said we can do that. I feel like that's pretty watching and reading. So what influenced you initially? I mean what like what kind of media? Uh, I don't know, man. We, we option VIP, isn't that your so, thing? Go on. Yeah, obviously option, video option. Uh Dory 10, uh Gran Turismo. Oh, um, yeah. You could just download every single video you could off Napster that had cars <laughs> that are drifting in it. Uh, and that was how you got all your con- car content back in the day. But like now, I don't know. Lately, I've just been watching a bunch of like the Lone Star Drift uh, Drift Week videos and blogs, trying to figure out what I'm getting myself into. Uh, I just watched like how to fix your fucking BMW vacuum pump, how to fix your N46 B20 fucking rocker cover gaskets. That's what I do. BMWs, just BMW things. (laughs) Also, Gerard listens to exhaust sound clips. Yeah, exhaust sound clips of uh, V8s. In uh, wild stancy cars. Yeah, I watch a bunch of really fucked up, totally useless brand new vans where basically dudes spend fifty, sixty thousand dollars on a top of the line super nice Toyota van and then destroy it <laughs> with like a <laughs> bunch of camber and like super low profile wheels and then drive around on the rim lip and can't turn. It's, yes. fucking, it's cool. I mean that sounds sick. Right. <laughs> Um, I, there is actually a whole episode dedicated to this very early on. It's like the media yeah. episode. It's like yeah. episode six or something like that. Or yeah. Five. But that's, I fine. do remember I that. Wanna, yeah. I, rem- I remember I was like, I watch videos of grass growing and paint drying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was the joke. It was great. Um, but that's fine. I don't want you to have to you can go listen to old stuff there's some there's some gems in there there are definitely things, some gems we should things that we show. haven't revisited uh, <laughs> for a long time gerard comparing being a drug addict to doing burnouts is I, like, I don't i haven't done burnouts in a long time kevin does them all the time, yeah now kevin gets it yeah exactly i do get it <laughs> yeah now he understands what addiction is um <laughs> jesus uh I'll answer this uh, hopefully uh, quickly, but I don't know if I can. Um, so I am from Regina, Saskatchewan. So like option and all that stuff wasn't really on my radar. Uh, and Gerard makes fun of me for this. I came up, started with like Super Street, stuff like that. I read all that stuff. Turbo Magazine, Super Street. I thought you made fun of me with the one time we did this for like. like no, it was, it was for what's the other one? The Canadian one? Pass Mag? Uh, Pass Mag. Oh, I didn't read past Mag though. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know. There's the I other did. one. I, I did, so, bro. Yeah, I did not read past. I had the best models of all the car <laughs> magazines. <laughs> I read Super Street, and then there was the other one that came with. Or compact car. Sometimes. 
Sport the compact uh, car. No, there's sport compact car. Maybe it only came with the DVD. Sport compact car was good. Street car challenge. Yeah, sport yeah, compact yeah. car had some very technical articles, but it was like also entertaining and like. Yeah, yeah, yeah I don't like between sport compact car and turbo magazine. Uh, turbo was definitely great. What about D Sport? I feel like that was like on the end. It was of a bit it. later. D Sport yeah. is one that that's the one that I'm thinking of. Is one that I read. D Sport I read, and wow. there's one other that I can't remember, but D Sport was one that I read. Do you remember um, that, that the drifting magazine? Which one? It was like it's. I think it was made by Super Street, but it was a specific yeah. like. Be, it became there was like a, it was volume one drifting, and then it was like, yeah. Anyway, it was just about I drifting thought, when it was like cool and new. And oh, I don't yeah. remember that. Yeah. Uh, I just put uh, up another. I just put up a whole other. Um, what did you do? Those are all right there. Dory 10 VIP style VIP car. Gerard's pointing to magazines for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> he forgot that it's not a visual medium. Uh, you guys. Yeah, okay. Well, now I have to explain what it looks like. So it's in the <laughs> west wing of Gerard's mansion. Um, anyway, they're well so dusted. Mag- you give the maid a yeah. tip. Yeah. Uh, I went from magazines to blogs. So I, when I was younger, I was big into Super Street, uh, and then Super Street? yeah, I don't know, Super, Super Street, Street, Fat Lace, and Illist. Uh, kind of, I always enjoyed the stuff Mark Arsenal did, just because like I feel like he was the model for anybody who ever had a blog. It was like have a blog, sell merchandise, buy Porsches. Yeah, I don't know. You know, there's no steps in between. You just do those three things. Uh, and what am I watching now? I go through stints where I don't watch stuff because sometimes I feel like if I watch too much stuff, I might inadvertently copy people when I edit stuff, which maybe isn't the right mentality. So No, you're supposed to be taking inspiration. Yeah, that's just code for a copy. No, I... Uh, I do. People won't like this. Imitation I do, is the sincerest form of flattery, bro. Flattery. Yeah, yeah, that's Fuck okay. I'm going to start imitating. Uh, Gerard, what are you looking at, cards? Obviously. No. Yeah. Not at all. Okay. I do. This will probably be controversial and people will get mad. I don't mind watching donut media videos right now. I like occasionally I'll be like, yeah, okay. Like, I just think they're like well produced and. It's kind of funny. I don't know. It is what it is. I mean, I haven't watched uh, one in so long and that I can't like say what that means now. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I think high car versus low car is kind of like fun. Those are pretty funny, man. They're very entertaining. Like in the and super well one. Done. The super the one. I don't, even, I, don't even, I don't even know what the whole. Well, they basically that's, have. That's two, what the premise is, but like. Two yeah. 350Zs, and one's high car is like you buy all the nice shit, and low cars you buy all the shitty shit. Or like, oh, the same like shit high and cheap. Low end? They're like, high, yeah, so yeah. Like eBay like, car and like, like brand name car. And then like, they fucking yeah. compete. Stats the race car, and high ride them. car? No, no, yeah. no. It's just the quality of the stuff. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's actually it's not, like not ride good. height. <laughs> they do ride. They've done coilovers. So, but they've done a few. So, 350Z <laughs> is the first one. And then they did uh, like overlanding stuff, kind of off roading. They did four runners, I think it was. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Yeah, it was a four by four. And now they're doing Subarus, and the Subaru one is funny because the engines just keep blowing. They've yeah. gone through like two engines, and you're just like, man, this is the perfect advertisement to not buy a Subaru. And I then like so. it'll cut to a YouTube commercial, for being like, a buy a Subaru, and you're like, oh. Yeah. Uh. Which it's brings me to a point. Oh, you go on. I'll I just saw thing. recently a like a like a half decent shop, like basically calling out Subaru, being like, "Look, like you guys are gonna have to fucking try way harder to hide this shit." And it showed the oil pad on all the FA twenty or whatever, like all the BRZs and like WRXs and whatever that two liter fucking engine they have. And so they took the oil pan off. And I guess what's happening is they use so much sealant on the perimeter of the pan that it's the excess is like hardened into, you know, Inside, into the gap. Yeah. And so like pieces fall off and clogged oil pump pick up. And that's why the engines blow up. And apparently it's like a totally well-known, yeah. documented, common thing. And Subaru is like, mm, I don't know. 
Toyota took yeah. a bunch of heat for that a few months ago. Like everyone was shitting on Toyota for it. Yeah. And there was all the memes of like, and then it's like Subaru is like not, you know, like they're off in the corner, like minding their own business. Yeah. Or there was Kermit drinking tea. Yeah, that's thing, the one. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was going to say as a side, the other weird thing is I never get um, ads for snowmobiles. And, Until now. Uh, this week, I've been getting <laughs> weeks for snowmobiles. Yeah, and I was like, mm, poor taste. Poor taste snowmobile. Did you uh, see that meme advertising? where it's like a dude with a gun at a snowmobile? He's like every car guy right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's pretty mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So those are, I don't know. I, I, I watch checkpoint videos. I always try to support the local homies and the things that they do. So checkpoint.jp. Uh, but I think probably my favorite thing ever for like video and stuff was always keep drifting fun to me was like the best best videos best content just yeah anyway those were my that's the be all end all for video content for this guy anyway that uh that is the content that uh we all consume and it makes us who we are so uh it would seem that kevin and gerard consume content for education (laughs) <laughs> and I consume content to be entertained. <laughs> so but not inspiration. It's honestly weird. Like YouTube. Yeah. yeah like I, I used to watch not used to, but like recently, obviously watch a lot of YouTube, like the influencers like Savant, LZ, Drift HQ. Like I do watch that stuff, but lately it's like I I don't really have the time to like get into it. And I've missed so many episodes. I feel like I'm kind of just like eh. And then I usually only watch YouTube for like 30 minutes or something now, or like, and then, yeah, like, because I have all these fucking BMW problems, I do have to watch like these like how to videos. Cause I have no idea. And then <laughs> I just watch cooking. Like I watch like, <laughs> I watch hours and hours of like walk skills that dudes like shredding with walks and like making okonomiyaki in Japan and stuff. That's like literally watch lately like cat comes down in the morning and i'm watching like okonomiyaki or like some dude making noodles on the street in like fucking thailand or something that's good Good. (laughs) um i watch a lot of serial nine videos just over and over and over again Uh, (laughs) i do that i definitely i go through spurts like i'll all of a sudden i'll watch every serial nine video you know what i mean like when one it's my it's my most visited YouTube page, I think. Really? That's, I line. really appreciate that because I haven't watched a Serial 9 video since I made one. So You watched the when you were in? the last. Oh, I also watched the what's the most recent one. was I wasn't in that. Oh, no, I was in that one. That was the most yeah, recent we're in that one. one. Yeah, yeah that's what I said. I haven't watched one since that one. There hasn't been one since that one. I know, but you guys are making it sound like you go back and watch them all the time. No, I just check the stats on all of your videos to see what. Oh, okay. Well, that's what I'm there for. Okay, I'm there for question. hardcore data. Data? Data. Do you say data or I'm there, data? I'm there to watch myself, you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I like get that. Mental You're masturbation, right. you know? Look at myself. Be like, oh, look there, at me. Yeah. All right. I like that we talked about uh, not that what Kevin just said. Uh, no. Um, <laughs> I like that we touched on Subaru and now we get this next question which i actually read when i was at the shop laughed and then uh, said i'll save it for the podcast and it's from our Ooh. friend flocka dial dundee slash yeah. asaka flocka yeah every time great name um hello this was from before christmas so well, it was merry christmas but i have a podcast question Same. What do you all think of Subaru drift cars? Most of them are sedans and wagons, which are cool. Those guys in Japan drifting like slammed brand new rear wheel drive SCIs and the low stars team drifting all kinds of rear wheel drive Subarus. They're, they're pretty cool. So what do you think of rear wheel drive Subarus drifting? Okay, I'll go first. I think rear wheel drive drifting Subarus is the coolest possible configuration of Subaru you could have. The only cooler configuration is when you take out the flat motor and you put in a Jay-Z and it's rear-wheel drive and it's a Subaru. And then you got like the best Subaru ever. 
Oof. Good. I mean, I can't mm-hmm. remember his name. I do follow a guy. He's got the Bungee rear wheel drive Subaru that drifts on the T's. That car is tight. Super tight. There was that one at Week Fest as well, wasn't there, that had the Jay-Z in it? Like here I mean, I'm, look, I'm looking at the low stars and it's like it's pretty sick. Like a lot of the cars are, are pretty dope. But like yeah, and, and a lot of them have like a cool, like unique style. Like like the, they don't totally look like two Subarus. <laughs> well, I mean, wow. he, now now here's there's like a Forester with like a roof box drifting, and now I feel like I'm like in Subaru territory. But uh, yeah, I mean, I I kind of maybe agree with Gerard. It's like if I was going to have a Subaru, that's probably what I would do with it. So like that is that is the coolest of of the Subaru, maybe. But then also it feels like, man, if you're going to have a Subaru, like why aren't you going to can block that shit and like be able to like take it over jumps, you know? Pick it up some sweet jumps. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. When's the last time you did a jump? <laughs> but I don't have a Subaru. a burnout or a. But jump. I don't have a Subaru. That's what I mean, though. If I had a you car, you take like, any car off a jump, man. I've, you, we've definitely jumped like. Okay, well then, uh, yeah. I mean, I've I've definitely jumped my like yeah. my car. You know. So then, if I had a car that was set up to do jumps, I'd probably be doing jumps with, like as often as I do burnouts. <laughs> <laughs> Let's know? build Kevin a jump car. Yes, I agree. It's a jump off, you heard? Um, yeah, heard. Okay. Duplicate and elaborate. <laughs> the best uh, what Subarus are kind of low and have uh, like f- those fake wheel, like their wheels that have like lip, but they're fake. Like what? ad hoans or like, what are those fucking wheels? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Are you being sarcastic though? Is yeah. You like? Yeah, I yeah no, these cars are all sick. These little stars cars are all sick. Yeah, yeah and I mean, I... Also- I I've driven a few Subarus and every time I drive one, I'm like, oh, this is pretty cool. Like it definitely is a good experience, but I just don't like them enough to like sway away from any other car that I would like before a Subaru. Like every time I drive one, I'm like, man, this thing's like pretty fast. Like, oh, this thing handles like pretty good. Like it's like doesn't even sound that bad. And it's like, but I just you know? So this is one thing, like, I, you know, it's that stereotype where it's just like, oh, all Subarus are, like, driven by, like, old people and lesbians. Um, and it's like, it is a little bit true. And But the other day I was driving to work, there's so many Subarus on the road, and they're all in my way. And, yeah, every time I passed them, it was either, like, a super old person. And then I got up on this other one, and it was, like, it had, like, some witches bumper sticker. And I was just like, yeah, okay. Like, yeah, I was like, <laughs> That's a Forester, though, right? No, yeah. No, it was like, like Foresters, like a... Tribecas, like all sorts of Tribecas. Stuff. Yeah, I was like, yeah. Oh, I haven't seen one of those in a while. I actually yeah, saw one the other day when I saw busted. it. I was like, weird. Uh, Jesse from Odd Man Out uh, had one that he did something with for a bit, I think. But that guy loves didn't, Subarus. Didn't He's Ian got from Subarus. Factory 83 have a, like a drift Subaru? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think he did. Yeah, and Logan from Do You Drift uh, Union yeah, had a Drift, drift Subaru. Yeah, that's you got uh, Team Orange. Team has Orange, the, yeah, has a fame. And that one didn't. Really that cool. one never did anything for me. I feel. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah, like I don't. Yeah, I don't, it was just too, too orange. <laughs> well, definitely too orange. Yeah, I never. I don't like orange. <laughs> it was also like, it was just like yeah, too Ken Blocky. It was like a rally car that he was just drifting. It felt like you know, it was real ah. drag, but like it. It wasn't low. It didn't look cool. Like, you know, I got to say this one that I'm sending you guys is pretty. Yeah. Yeah, This again, our podcast is not a visual medium. I know, but like Um, you could just say Yagi underscore GRB. Yeah. Yeah. Car looks fucking tight. Those rear wheels are huge. Yeah. And it's very low. And it's a where on where on the pecking order, like what cars would have to go away for you to drive a Subaru? Me? Like, yeah. So you get rid of Toyota. You get rid of. We've BMW. done this before, and like Gerard would yeah, drive no. the Charger <laughs> instead of the Honda Type R. Or well, also Honda. there's or any the, Subaru. Well, there's also the whole thing about like I'm sure a Subaru can drift, but like I'd have to. I already deal with fucking Toyotas, man. Like, you know, Toyotas. You got to do a bunch of shit to make them kind of good to drift too, and it's like. I'm not getting younger. I'm getting older. I don't want to learn. Like I'm already learning BMWs. I don't want to learn Subarus and like, I, like have to take out the front wheel drive and do all this stuff. Like maybe if somebody sold me one, 
somebody sold me one that was rear wheel drive and like kind of already sick it i might a v12 century motor in it no i mean it could as long as it i mean obviously if it didn't have a flat four motor i'd be way more inclined to like be down with it uh, they do look cool i think they're cool i think i do think stance subarus are very cool like it's just kind of like a weird just juxtaposition it's like you take this car that, that's like kind of supposed to do all this like rally car shit it's kind of like a slam truck you know yeah <clears throat> very pacific northwest of you to say um <laughs> when i was in my when i was like 19 in 20 i thought i was gonna get a subaru it was like my next car will be a subaru i wanted an impreza i was all in then like then i found out you can import a 180 and i was like fuck that shit sr20s yeah i feel uh, like i wanted an impreza as well yeah well because it just seemed like when you have a regular like i went from like a mazda mx3 so then it's like oh man like this car is going to be it's all basically drive. A subaru <laughs> yeah no but you're in Regina, Saskatchewan. It's like all-wheel drive in the winter is kind of cool. And they would make a decent amount of power at some mm-hmm. point, you know? So it's like, oh, that's that's pretty cool. Um, okay, I'll ask like now, after that. I was just going to say, but now the idea of them, they kind of terrify me just because of the reliability <laughs> issues. I don't think I could, I don't think I could handle that. It wouldn't be for me. So I don't Actually, know. Like it, they're pretty low on the pecking order of like now, Japanese cars. I don't. Now that I think about it, I actually uh, was very close to buying a Subaru at one point. So when I was um, looking for a family car back in the day, when uh, Dominic was born, and we had this like shady Civic, and I finally had like some sort of money to buy a wagon. It was between a Stagia and a Legacy, and the Legacy twin turbo, and then the Stagia RB twenty five turbo. Um, and I thought that the legacies were pretty cool because uh, Ronald had his legacy at the door. He had like out back at the time that I'd like done some work on it, had like Meisters and it was pretty sick and stuff. And I just, yeah, like the twin turbo flat four. And then also like Subarus are fucking cheap cars. Like they're pr- pretty shitty. Like Nissans are shitty, but they're like really cool shitty. So like, the shittiness is like sort of justified, whereas like Subarus are just kind of shitty. It's like basically like a Hyundai with like cool turbo parts. With and like, like better Rororos. engineering, yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? It has like, you take a Hyundai and you put BBSs and fucking Brembos and Recaros and turbos on it and it's like a Subaru. A Pajaro. You know? <laughs> so, so yeah, I just couldn't get down with it. I just yeah, I couldn't make that jump. And then also like, yeah, those fucking engines were just so unreliable. And like every Subaru, in my opinion, is just unreliable. It's like, so. Yeah. It'd be hard uh, to be a Toyota owner and then be like, now I'm going to own a Subaru. It's like yeah. two very opposite ends of the spectrum. The question I was going to ask you is if you had a Subaru, what would it be? Me? You and then Kevin. Oh, uh. I mean an STI, like that would I know, be... but which one would it be? An Impreza? Ooh. Would it be a Forester? Is it going to be a Bug Eye Dog? A Legacy? Be... I would I mean, do you can just either... one of those a three. Hawkeye, buddy. Oh, Hawkeye's Hawkeye. Are good, yeah. Hawkeye's are yeah, they're fucking sick. Those are the ones. Bug Eyes were kind of neat too. Uh, I think that's just a generational thing. That was like, yeah, what was kind of around when I was uh, coming up. And so, like, the hot guys and the bug guys are probably my two favorite. I'm not super keen on, like, the newer... I, I mean, the newer one's not bad. I don't think I'd do the, the wagon-ish version of it, though. Oh, so you wouldn't do a hatchback. It'd be a sedan. No, I'd do a sedan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would not do, like, the, the Forester one, so that's not for me. But getting, like, the blue with, like, the you can get it with like the pink stickers. It's kind of fun. Or the pink I emblems, guess. you mean? Yeah, the pink emblems. Yeah. Yeah. Pink emblems are just the STI. But yeah. STI, yeah. Yeah. I feel like Kevin saying. would have a Forester. I would. I think I would definitely take the Forester. I honestly, like, whenever I see Satoshi's, I'm like, I get it. Like, like especially if you have the STI version. And, but then, yeah, also, I don't know. It's like, yeah. I don't know. I can't, yeah. I had that stupid legacy. That was like the worst car I ever had. But <laughs> I, yeah, feel like yeah, was, yeah. I feel like that was just a lemon. But 
Yeah, not for yeah. me. That scared me away from Subaru. Like I tried to like dip my toe in, and I was like, no, not for me. But I wonder what life would be like if it worked out for you. Okay, well that's the thing. Is like Matt and I had this friend who had a bunch of cars and a bunch of money, and he let Matt have this uh, two point five RS of his for like an extended period of time, like two yeah. months. So like Matt and I got both got to drive like the shit out of that car. And it was so fast and like handled way better, braked way better and had like more comforts than my Corolla or his 240. But like you couldn't really drift it unless you were on the gravel. And so that was <laughs> sort of a thing where we were like, well, you know, it's, it's not it's not for us. But it was yeah, so yeah. much. It was so it much if it was real drive. Exactly, man. That's the thing. It's like it was so, so much better than our cars were. But also was like five to six times more expensive than our car. Right. Yeah, it's like if somebody gave you a 400 Z right now. Exactly. And they're like, yo, man, like just drive this. And you're like, why do I have a fucking crown or a fucking Altezza or any of these cars? You know? Yeah, when this one car is doing all of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that is. Yeah, so this guy's name dilemma. is Yoshiki Kuruki. He's the one JZ uh, GRB. That's mm. that's the shit. That car's sick. Cool. Do you want to keep talking about Subarus? Or no. Do you want to do another question? Good. No, you're I mean, not. I like the blob eye one, or the yeah blob eye one the most. Blob eye. Yeah, it's like a big square one, but it has like uh, the semicircle sort of in the. Oh, I think I remember. The, towards the grill, yeah. It's like before the Hawkeye and after the whatever frog blob eye. eye. There's a frog guy, Jesus. Oh There's yeah, every, the blob eye is not bad either. Yeah, There's I don't like know. I know it. Stupid name, yeah. Yeah, that one's not bad either. I don't mind that one. And then what was the last one you said? Frog guy? Is there not a frog guy one? That's frog guy salad when I was googling it. Um, <laughs> I think no, frog maybe guy. No, I, yeah, maybe not. Bug eye, hawk eye, stink eye. Blob eye is eye. better yeah, than pink eye one. Frog guy. <laughs> Blob eye is better than pink 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 eye. Fuck this. Better than bug eye. I think actually that would be the one I would go with. Now that I look at it, that would be the one. I don't even know what I'm doing. That's a good pick. Fucking bug eye. Bog eye. Bog eye. Bog eye, frog eye, dog pie. Dog pie. And down in the swamp, Subaru. Aye. Was that a Kia commercial? That's that's a Kia, yeah. That's the yeah, that should have been a super. Yeah, should have yeah. been a super. Uh, I remember when I was younger, everybody well, they were coming for Subaru. That they were trying to come they were, for Subaru. Yeah, and everybody thought Subarus were Australian when I was a kid. Well, I mean, they were called because I swear they had Australian marketing and the car. They was had called the Crocodile Outback. Dundee, didn't they? Exactly. Wasn't that the yeah, I feel yeah. like a ripoff of him. It was They're like, like Australians built the car him. and it's that, and it's like, no, nah, that's Japanese. They're like, no, it isn't. Why would they get Crocodile Dundee to be their representative? Exactly. <laughs> Spokesperson. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. All right. All right. Hey, Kevin, you kind of touched on this. And this is from our pal that has a, a very fun name, Street Shaman. Um, nice. He said, hey, bros, what's one thing you guys hate about drivers while commuting? And what's something you know other drivers hate about you while commuting? <laughs> First, he said, Smashing personally, hate... That. <laughs> personally hate it when i'm on the highway and i go to the fast lane to pass someone then they speed up something oh, i yeah. something definitely. i know people definitely. gotta hate about me he said people one, definitely huh? hate him he tailgates when i'm yeah, in the fast cool. lane yeah and if you're if you're ahead of him going slower he tailgates <laughs> yeah i'll like, tailgate the shit out of him yeah i've i've driven with kevin I think tailgating so is know. fucking stupid. So stupid. Well, get out of my way. Yeah, but like, you think tailgating is going to be like, "Hey, get out of my way!" Like, you think yeah, a little bit am I? Definitely push the car. I mean, if you if I look at my mirror and someone's right on my bumper, then I will move over because obviously they want by. But if yeah, they're like, let them know. Five car lengths back, then I'm like, oh well, like whatever. We're all fine. It's all good here. Uh, what uh, are? I gotta say, my biggest pet peeve is Teslas driving slow in the fast lane when they could drive slow in the middle lane, they could drive slow in the slow lane or they could drive slow in the goddamn HOV lane or drive fast in the fast lane or drive or drive fast in any of the fucking lanes. It's just like, don't go way under the speed limit in the fast lane. When I can't pass you in the lane that you only, you could go. Is that only Tesla's or is that just anybody that does that? 
I mean, it's mostly cars that are electric because they could go in the HOV lane even if there's only one person. You know, so oh, I they're see in the HOV saying. or in the fast lane. No, they're in they're the fast. In the fast but, but they could why be they in the, the HOV. Exactly. That's what gets them. One thing I gotta say, that dude with the with the one JZ, guess what transmission he has? <laughs> Sorry, I'm just like looking, researching. He has a fucking CD in that thing. But it's got a fucking the bell housing's welded. So he welded like a Jay-Z bell housing to the CD one. That seems like some Japanese style. Yeah, but it's like he could run our shifter. Yeah, you that's, should reach out to him. That's kind of what I'm saying. Yeah. All right. All right. <clears throat> really, we moved past that and you're back there thinking big picture business. Um Okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense, and I get Kevin's. That's gonna, Kevin's be, a big, that's gonna got... be a real big market for us too. Japanese dudes in Japan who have Subarus with Jay Z's. <laughs> I mean, he has a GK Tech shifter right now. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying, it's fucking terrible. All right, all right. Spent all what... that money welding the bells. <laughs> <laughs> what thing, though, Kevin? Do you do that you think people don't like? I guess it's what you just said. I mean, I guess it's tailgating because even Gerard doesn't like it. So, yeah. If if you didn't have that answer, what would you say? Um, every once in a while, where I'm extremely frustrated, I will uh, like rip it into the on ramp and pass people. Oof. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's not that's, that's not very common, but Kevin Kevin gets all sorts of feels when he drives. <laughs> yeah, I'm an emotional. He's driver. working through some shit out there. Uh Gerard, I know what people probably would be the most okay. Gerard, you answer this question and then I'm gonna give you the real answer. Okay, so what do people what do I hate the most about people? Yeah, yes. I honestly just hate it when people get fucking choked. It's like it's like, for example, like there's enough room for me to get in. I go to get in and then you fucking speed up to not let me in because you're some fucking ego douchey fuckhead who like is like, oh my God, he's going to get in front of me. And then I have can't let him in. It's like, all right, like, dude, just, just either fucking stay back. or oh, I got another me. one. I don't give a fuck where you are. Just don't like do the thing to not let me just drive or like, what's another one? Like that's, that's the kind of main one is like, you need to get in or something. And yeah, like the other day, I go to get into the, like to get into the lane to exit, whatever, right? Like, you you know, you're in the left lane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The right lane is exiting and there's plenty of room and there was a gap. I go to get in the gap, dude speeds up and starts fucking making all these hand signals and shit to me. I'm just like, dude, what the fuck do you want? I said, I'm telling him, just go ahead. Just, if you're going to go fast, go fast so that I can get behind you. I don't give a fuck where I get in in front of you or behind you. I just need to get in. Anyways, yeah, that's... he's all like doing this fucking shit and getting all mad. I'm just like, whatever, man. For those of you at home that don't know, Gerard is flailing his hat <laughs> madly like Kermit the Frog. So, but the whole thing lately is like, honestly, I'm a pretty docile driver. I just drive fast and then like really just, I would assume that some people get kind of choked because you're driving faster than them. And like, you know, if there's a gap, you utilize the gap to like, you know, make a lane change or get ahead of someone or something. But like, I'm not like cutting people off or like tailgating. You're a real, them. you're a real Senna right there. Hey, <laughs> what is if that? you're no longer taking the gap, are you really like, you know, the, yeah, the famous I just quote? try to like drive efficiently kind of faster than everyone, which of course will make some people mad because they see you like, Oh, that guy's speeding or that guy's like, I don't know. And he's like, but like, see, the thing is, too, is like if you hold yourself to like a high standard, like Kevin probably can, can relate with this. Like if you do more than like two or three lane changes to to like get ahead, you kind of suck. So like, yeah. So like you also have to take into account that like you're trying to efficiently move through traffic, but like you have to. What's the word like uh, calculate like the gaps and the, the overall speed of the right lane versus the ref lane. Cause you could, you know, you could change lanes, right. You could change lanes left. And that's to the other thing. What are some of the things that I hate that people do? That's one of the things that I hate when people do. They're yeah. driving fast. They're changing lanes They're changing lanes They're changing lanes. They fucking end up right beside you or behind you. Or yeah, one they, they can't, they can't figure it out. Yeah, which, they, they don't know what the fuck they're doing. They're just trying to drive fast. And it's like, I feel like that's like a weird, like video game thing, like <clears> uh, some sort of like Tetris or something where you can like, 
you can see like, oh, like this lane, the, the guy in the center lane is slowly, slowly overtaking the guy in the right lane, but not as fast as he's overtaking the guy in the left lane. And you can kind of be like, okay, like I'll go in the center lane and then I'll cut through here yeah. and like, you know. And that's the thing. Save it's like one there's... second. The the yeah, the amount of effort required to like make all those moves to to gain one fucking spot is for me lately not really worth it. It's like I'll just sort of sit in the slightly faster lane and like maybe it takes 10 or 15 seconds to pass the one car versus me doing some crazy move to like cut the guy off and then at the light now now you're just in front of him like whoop de fucking do you know what I mean? So that's probably something that I hate. And then yeah, I don't know. I I mean I rewrite someone the other day. That was really fucking cool. So people probably don't like when you smash into him with a big ass SUV. <laughs> I was gonna say Gerard romps on it everywhere he drives. If you're with Gerard, he's always romping on it. If you're in a residential area, Gerard's romping on it. You're like Gerard's always going for I it. I guess people don't like the sound of my cars or like yeah. The, yeah, the way you drive. If you if you romp on it, it makes noise. So maybe people don't yeah. like that. So I would uh, I would wager that that would be a thing that the biggest complaint you would get aside from running into people yeah. romping on it. Um, <clears throat> we've talked about this before. I drive a Prius, so everything on the road now offends me because everybody <laughs> treats me like a, like I'm a lesser than a human being. Yeah, uh, like a, yeah, not a peasant, but like a like a, what do they call those things? Like a, like a gnat. <laughs> yeah like just a piece of shit um i actually don't like and this is probably wrong and i know people are supposed to do this but when there's like a giant line and people like rip in front it? of the line and, and like no, okay, no like, that's funny because this is what i was about to say the opposite of what you were saying right now so say yeah, i i don't okay, like so, when people sorry. it's like it's like i'm clearly waiting and then someone's like i have more important places to be and i need to like get in front of you or it's called merge like it's called merge like a zipper yeah and that's how you're supposed to do it if there's two lanes i know but everything's supposed to fill up all of the lane just because you can't know the rules of the road yeah and you want to sit there like a fucking brain dead zombie that's why you get treated like a fucking idiot exactly that was in the four hey that was in the forerunner the last time that happened yeah exactly because you're still doing then i didn't let him in and they didn't like that yeah because now you're like you fucking i waited in line for 20 minutes like a fucking idiot because i don't know the rules of the road i don't know now i'm upset because you do and you're coming in front of me and see that's that's a north american thing too and it's honestly pretty fucking stupid because like what's that we have the biggest roads in the entire world and if people could drive nobody can even slightly more efficient like if our if our drivers were like 15 percent more proficient the shit the traffic would not be would be like 50 percent less it's like that's exactly the thing it's like the the lineup mentality it's like one line to merge to the right and it's like if you were to go ahead people get all choked it's like if everybody were to do the two lanes and zipper yeah everybody would get through faster yeah i'm just not keen on someone reading a sign and then knowing that it's happening and then pretending like they didn't know and then all of a sudden they rely on the fucking kindness of strangers i see okay that's that's a perfect example Okay, it's so you're now you're strange. saying it's that the traffic's it's one moving one. fairly slowly in in to make a right lane or something like that, um, and then Buddy goes ahead in the left lane and then tries to get in right, and now he's got his signal on, and you said he's depending on some fucking schmo to let him in, right? Yeah, that's what, so that guy fucking sucks too, because like that's I guarantee you that within your little fucking lineup there is more than enough room for that guy to get in 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 the next five to ten cars easily yes. without yes. without making anybody drive slower or any of that shit and if yeah, everybody were to do that everybody would get through much faster but that's the thing is that there's probably a gap somewhere that right. he's not utilizing not using he's yeah not right because he's that's too. what exactly. i don't like exactly and then he and he's, he's like putting nicer. a signal on and making you slow down fuck that yeah yeah, yeah fuck that so that happens to me like every that. time because like the exit for my house it's it's just before a bridge in a tunnel. There's two lanes in the tunnel that go over the bridge. And there's one lane in the tunnel that just after the tunnel exits just before the bridge. And that's the exit I have to take. 
So people try and rip up in the exit lane and cut over into the two lanes of traffic. And same thing. It's like, man, if I come up behind you and you're stopped there with your turn signal on trying to get in because you can't figure out how to roll, see a gap and like merge in, I will just honk nonstop until I'm But also if that guy's trying to get in front of you, you're letting him (laughs) in or you're not letting him in? No, he's they're sure never trying to get in front of me because they're oh, always they're trying I mean, to get Ryan. out of. What sometimes you, like you letting him in? Or no, you, depends. You doing the, like, I'm no, usually I'm like fuck that, that shit. Depends. See, that's this, what I mean. It's, it's, like, no, this, has happened, this has happened to me recently where it's like, oh, all of a sudden, like I look, I look down at my phone because it's in bumper to bumper traffic. The the line in front of me moves. All of a sudden, someone gets the jump and they're halfway in my lane now. And yeah, it's that's like, what I mean. Yeah, they, I mean they got me. Like, what am I? You know, like the. You know, you're paying more. Yeah, but then I don't let. Sometimes I don't let them get me. I and this is the comparison. If I'm in the forerunner, it sounds dumb, but people are like less likely to like to play that game. Yeah, fuck around and find out. Yeah, for sure. So I'll I'll tell you a fucking sweet, sweet, sweet ass story. One of the highlights of my Costa Rica trip. So we went drove those gymneys. Um. And we're coming back and a lot of the, a lot of the bridges in Costa Rica are one lane only. So there's like, you know, there's, and if there's enough traffic, there's like only these guys coming through and then only these guys coming through. So there was a lot of traffic coming this way, Buddy goes up drives up onto the fucking. So there's like the abutment for the railing. Yeah. Onto the abutment of the railing with the two wheels and like drives oncoming traffic and we're driving chimneys so i go to follow him and i fucking missed it at first because he has wider wider track than me like he had like sticky outy kind of so i missed it at first i had to back up and i did it again but like it was wild i was like there's cars (laughs) coming and shit and i'm like driving like this dude it was (laughs) fucking cool man yeah it sounds so sick but yeah like kind of sketchy he fully trusted like my driving abilities i was like uh, it was like a pretty crazy movie he's like do you have time to wait for traffic i don't like i was like no i don't (laughs) (laughs) time is money um i I read this thing by the hour bro yeah. Yeah. What was my other one that I didn't like? I because that was the thing. I was waiting for Gerard to finish because I wanted to bitch about people who don't merge like a zipper. Yeah. And then you wanted to bitch about people who who try and merge like a zipper. No, I'm fine with merging like a zipper. I'm like not down with the like, by like pushing your way in. Pushing your way like in. That. The, yeah, like relying there should never on be a pushing the way in if if like, everybody's it's like, I, Yeah, exactly. that's what I'm saying. It's like. Oh, I'm like gonna nudge in on you and like but I also at the same time, like that shit. Like, does it really hurt you to let that dude in and the guy behind you let the next guy in? And the, you know what I mean? Like it just it doesn't but what yeah, no, but, but like I, no, but I what totally happens agree. In, what happens in that scenario that like I'm talking about where it's like, all right, like if you were know you have to go over the bridge, you need yeah. to be in the left two lanes, yeah. like a kilometer back. Yeah, but now you're flying up as fast as you can, and now you gotta stop and, and as late as you can to cut in. And I, I used to do that all the time over the Night Street Bridge, where yeah. I would be like, all right, because also same thing. It's like I'm proficient enough to like see when a car accelerates, but the car behind them doesn't, leaves yeah. a big gap, and I can get in there. Yeah. What but about if, when if I didn't, I would never budge my way in. I just like eat the crow and be like, Oh, yeah. I didn't see the gap, yeah, exactly. I didn't cut in, and now I had to take the exit, and now I'm you know, now, now, now you gotta go around. Yeah. Now I gotta go around and figure it yeah, out. Yeah, you're not stopping putting your signal and waiting for someone. Yeah, yeah no, I'm people never, are no, never do that. No, like you and gotta then, you gotta like you're you're in your shame at that point. You're like uh, fully exact fucked up, you know what I mean? And then when you let one person in and the dude behind is like, I'm coming too, and you're like, No, like it's no. a zipper, and yeah. that's the other. I don't like that. I yeah. eh, fuck them. I have yeah. no qualms about letting people in though. Like, I mean, even if I, I don't like when people do the like stop and signal move. If they're stopped and signal, I probably won't let them in. But if they're like kind of moving and like you're like, oh shit, like maybe I misjudged the gap on the last car, or, like whatever. Well, this is something interesting too. It's like Obviously. if they if they had out of state plates or whatever, like I'd be more inclined to let them in because I'd be like, oh, maybe they didn't know that all of a sudden this this lane stops right here and exits, or so you know. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'd be a little bit more lenient to to those those things if you were from out of town yeah oh man um, i had the thing that really bothered me and now i can't remember tell you what when i was young i definitely drove like the biggest asshole on the planet like i'm well, surprised yeah. i didn't get fucking like killed or something like by people <laughs> i would do the thing where like like on a right turn like on a street i would go up in the left lane and like fucking cut in at like full speed 
to, you know what I mean? Like around the guy in the left lane, like, you know, just like, I wouldn't give a fuck if like, you're supposed to turn right in the right lane. I just like turn right from the left lane. Oh yeah. Like all this stupid shit. Like <laughs> it's just well, driving pre- to work. Pre cell phones. People couldn't call it in on you. you know? Yeah, exactly. But driving <laughs> to work back in the day was like always some sort of fucking race. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's fair. I've said it before. I'll say it again. It's, it's hilarious. I don't know. In the morning I drive extremely calmly and like, and then on the way home from work, I'm just, I always, I'm just driving like a, like a demon. I'm the opposite. When I drive the blit to work, man, some of the, some of the drives to work in the blit were like, I got to get to work and I'm like, probably shouldn't have done that. I'm like shaking and like, <laughs> like, <laughs> no, like no, I'm no, surprised no. you're not, you know, on the side of the road, dad, like maybe don't do that. Yeah, you just need that like adrenaline rush, like in the morning to like fucking kick you in the high gear to go to work. Yeah. So the thing that people don't like about me is that I drive a Prius. That's my answer <laughs> to that. But like on occasion, they just they don't like, like that Prius. Prius isn't allowed to do anything. <laughs> I had another one that I didn't like. It was a big pet peeve, and now I honestly sorry. I just keep life talking. of me can't remember that is. Um, all right. Uh, there was another question from Falkadile Dundee, but I liked that Kevin did talk about traffic. So then I was like, oh, this in the biz is what we call a smooth transition. But Dude, it's all here's about a... traffic. <laughs> yeah, Kevin loves to talk about traffic. Kevin loves to navigate traffic. Um, all right. So here is the other question from Falkadile T- Dundee. It was for Kevin and Gerard. Outside of the reality of paying to get there and where they are located, if you had to choose one track for the rest of your life to drift, which would it be? Oof. And for you, what is the one track you would shoot motorsports at? For you, Ryan, consider what kinds of events get held at the tracks. Consider Ooh. something like, I can't say it, Tsuba? Is that? Tsukuba. 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 Scuba has drifting, time attack, wheel to wheel, idlers, events, etc., or somewhere like Button Willow that has multiple tracks that host all kind of events. Or would you go with something like Ibisu hosts tons of drifting events? So if mm-hmm. money was no option, but you only had <laughs> on a desert island, if you only had one racetrack for the rest of your life, this is really tough. That I have is a really tough because. I don't know if I've been to enough places to really know. My answer, I'll answer it after. You guys answer. I mean, that's a really tough question. Because, like, do you pick a track you've never been and you've always wanted to go and hope that it's just like, the best thing ever? Because, like, I feel like you pick Ebby Sue and then there's like, you know, you got whatever nine different tracks that you could drive and that seems like the best choice, you know? Yeah um but i've never been there so it feels weird to be like that's the one i'm gonna pick yeah same here if i had to pick one that i've actually driven it probably have to be us air or us a i r um (laughs) (laughs) because yeah Yeah. it's just there's multiple layouts for that and it's super fun and i've actually been there but there's still only a you know still one third the layouts of episode yeah, yeah. Not even not even close because it's like if there's nine tracks, you can like do it forwards, do it backwards, like do it this way, do it that way. Like and I would probably need a higher speed track than than, than US. Yeah, area. yeah, I know what you mean. Like I do like I do love the track. Yeah, I just, just wish that it was like it was some sca- fast. like scaled it up a bit, like boop, 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 boop. Well, I mean that one thing, that one thing where they were doing where that you can kind of drift through this sort of uh, yeah, or whatever yeah. they they did say they were getting into third there and it looked like a faster straighter section it does seem still pretty sketchy though it's not like it's definitely not like like a track track you know what i mean yeah i mean it definitely seems like you could have a lot of fun there for like like i mean i had a ton of fun at pacific speedways and like that was a bit like like to full out track but that was the other thing is like there's only like a little section that was like a driftable sort of section and then you have these long straights to like <clears throat> airpins to long straights and there's... faster bigger car no but you're there's no way you're drifting it you can manji the straights okay you're gonna go like just manji down and like a two-lane straight for 
half a kilometer. There's no way it's bigger than Sakuba. There's no fucking way it's bigger than Sakuba. And they drift Sakuba. So, or even yeah. even what's that Pukaheke or whatever the fuck in New Zealand? Like the straights on that track are huge, and they fucking drift the straights. Yeah. So. Hmm. Part of this, I would think, is like okay. So if you can only go to one track for the rest of your life, you get one track. I mean, these means... also have a zoo, so it's, a, it's cool. <laughs> yeah. Good. Great. Um, does that mean you also get unlimited trips for free to where the track is? No, I think I just said like money's no option. Like, like you would just bring the track to you. No, or like you're you're like all look, this, is it all like of a sudden I your uncle a... you're all of a sudden your uncle died and donated you a hundred billion dollars, you know? <laughs> So you literally, just go and it literally there. doesn't matter. Yeah. You, yeah. You, yeah. And then he's like, hey, you can only drift. You can go to this drift track as many times as you want, but it can only be one. You got to sign a contract. I mean, I know, then I like that's. The I know, but now I'm wondering <laughs> because then you got to take into account where you're traveling to. No, you don't. It's money's no option, I feel. Option or object? object? No, no, object. but hear me out. H- hear me out. I'm here. So, okay. You are told that you can go to one track for the rest of your life, unlimited. But if it's like just a track and you don't get to visit the surrounding area, that might sway my opinion a bit more. You know, like if you're saying you can go to Ibisu and you get to go to Japan whenever you want. that's I don't think that's supposed to be part of the equation. Yeah, I know. I'm really overthinking it, but I want to know if I get. The other part of drifting, which is like the sightseeing, and like I, I don't think so. Yeah, but no, maybe I don't son know. of a bitch. Well, I, I mean, like, like Gerard said, like you, you're on now. You're on a desert island, and you got the car and the track. That's you know. Oh, then you just go for the one that has the most. But that also, <laughs> no, but he. Like, I said desert the media island. question. The media question was yeah. very different, though. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I felt like you go to the one. It is because cause you're going most events. Yeah. But I only really care about drifting. So then you go to the one that has the most, has the best drifting, which feels like Ibisu. Is that probably what it feels like? Uh, yeah, and then I get to go to Japan whenever I want. Also, the Ibisu thing is like um, um, your car would have to be probably not very low because the track is definitely kind of more gnarly. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Right? Oh, it's not like an eco or, or like, you know, uh what's the one that like villains is modeled after uh suzuka no it's not suzuka it's the the naoki track uh (laughs) i can't think of it then how embarrassing um (laughs) i don't know uh (laughs) it is modeled after a track i don't know which track I can't remember. Can I just Not really it? feeling like googling it either. Uh, all right. Oh. Uh, Naoki. Yeah, Naoki Nakamura. Oh, Kevin's gonna be best friends with him soon. Mm-hmm. I love that he just gets like flown all over the place to drive with people. It's just like, oh yeah, the Americans love me. They'll they'll fly me over here. And I mean, well, he's driving. He's other driving other the European series this year. Yeah, but I mean, like he's coming to Drift Week, right? Yeah, yeah. So what is he like, driving? I don't think some one eighty that they built for him or something. Yeah, like uh, no, I think he's driving a, a V eight S. He has two cars. I think one's a V eight S thirteen, and the other is like a pretty stock three fifty Z. Yeah, buddy, three fifty Z. But then, then that's the, the, the thing is like that's like the the that car of, of Drift Week. Over. No, they're paying for all of it. They're paying for him to be here. Yeah, and it's just like that is a wild, funny thing to me. I get it. I totally understand it. It's just like, imagine that existence. That's the opposite of the question. It's just like, now you get paid to go to any track in the world and drift. Uh, I don't really have an answer for that question, but it'd be whatever has the best drifting with the nicest cars. Maybe it would be US Air. You just go to Final Belt all the time. It's like an easy, kind of an easy win. Uh, uh, that's not one track, right? <laughs> U.S. Air. So you're just well, going like, to cover karting events and final boats? Well, no, but I mean, like, hang on. 
we live around racetracks that do other things and I never go to it. I could go to drag racing and cover drag racing and yeah. I could go and cover. But like, I think those are just kind of sort of like the only things that are happening there. No. Where? Yeah. I would only ever cover drifting though. Like I'm not going out of my way to cover other car events. It's like. Like car shows or car meetups yeah. at sticker shops. <clears throat> yeah, I do that. But like motorsports, sorry, I should say. And honestly, there isn't much of a the draw for anything else I found whenever I shoot it just doesn't exist. Like I've shot GRC and nobody cared. And uh, you know, like I've tried other events. There just isn't like any uh there isn't any like real buy-in on it. There isn't like people being like, Oh yeah, we're totally into this. So yeah. in a way people's engagements probably earlier on also uh affected the what i chose to shoot and how i approached things and yeah. i mean i'm a, an adult with a kid i got Man. a limited amount of time so i'm gonna sh- there you go i'm gonna shoot the thing that i care the most about which is drifting so yeah makes sense. you know you know how it would be it'd be so like that sometimes you're not gonna go to the house of drift and shoot the best drifting in the world you're not going to go to ABC where it's, there's drifting every day of the year. But then I might, but so the, now the trick is, is that Gerard said like at a best, Ibisu, Ibisu, uh, mm-hmm. you might, the cars, are they like always dope there? Like, no, they're always no? fucking trash. Yeah. Like I want to go to the track that has the nicest cars that drift. I feel like for me, it'd probably be the most exciting driving. And I feel like, because you only have one track, like I feel like the driving would probably get pretty fucking that's not, it's not one track though, isn't it? Like eight tracks. Yeah, it's eight tracks, but that's what I'm saying. Like the even the main track seems like the most excited. The toge track seems the most. I mean, even the fucking school course has like a hundred fucking layouts or something. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. If I was if I was in your shoes, I agree with you. Like if I was going to learn how to drive then that would be the that would be the ticket but would that not maybe be the most interesting because like it's like oh maybe on tuesday at this track there's like this event happening and on wednesday at this at this track there's these guys doing their testing and on like thursday it's like oh toyota rented it and you know what i mean like it might be who knows am i and i'm invited to all of those things like i mean it's kind of sounds like it it's like the track that you like live at for the rest of your life apparently i I live there well, that's, that's kind of what it sounded like. Uh, yeah, yeah. I would honestly have to like there there would be so much homework involved in that where you'd have to like actually research like okay, who has the most drift events? And then you'd have to cross reference that with like who has the nice What if you you had one minute to pick and it's overthinking. Like, the, the genie's about to grant the wish, Ryan. Jesus. I think like my gut reaction would be a best EBC. Uh and then that's probably not the right answer. And then when I think about I it, it's definitely like, not a bad answer. It's not a bad answer, but also just yeah, here's the thing. Answer. Financially, if I could bad answer. I would go to I'd go to final belt. Like what about Nerva Ground? <laughs> Honestly, like the minute the question came up, that was the first track that I thought of. Oh, really? Yeah. And so just, like if money was no object, you could build any car to drift and drive on the river green. That's pretty crazy. I feel like you couldn't down. even I could I feel like you couldn't do it though. Like the, the lap in like a crazy car takes eight minutes. Like you, I don't think a tire, I don't think you'd have a so crazy like, car that would last eight minutes of drifting. You don't think you can drift for eight minutes? Just get different tires. Yeah, yeah. But I think that like maybe if you wanted to be able to yeah, I don't know. Also, the surface condition is very rough, right? But yeah, oh, I mean, it's so, probably I, not too far off from a piece. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but yeah, I, I think the speeds would be higher, so tire wear would be higher. I think you need to have a crazier car, so yeah. Tire wear would be higher. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. That'd be uh, that'd be interesting. But I mean, didn't didn't that dude drift Nurburgring in that in that in the Cressida? Yeah, the NA Cressida. That's a fairly was low power. That wasn't NA, was it? Yeah, that? it's an NA fucking 2J. No way that thing's NA. 100%. I think it's a 2J. I think it's a 2J. 
If it's not, if it's the same one I'm thinking of, I know that that car is. I mean, I, I know the one we're thinking of. It's blue, and it's like no, it's like if yeah, there's an X three. There's a there's a goddamn meme. Yeah, it's an X three. Yeah, where he's like drifting. Goddamn meme. <laughs> it's so good though. That's All right, stuff. my but my actual my actual answer when I wrote it was like, Kevin and I are <laughs> going to do Drift Week, which is more than a week, which is confusing <laughs> and so it. i said huh you wrote it no but i mean like it's called drift week it's not called drift weeks so we're gone for two weeks yeah you know you know what i'm saying yeah um, I mean, that doesn't have the same ring to it though yeah 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 yeah. drift half a month um and then i said that i'll have a better sense of tracks that i would enjoy my favorite track that i probably ever shot was park just because like it's dynamically yeah, park would be sick like, just so yeah. you could have park in your backyard fuck yeah yeah and that was nice um but i said going to see all these other tracks uh but i'd have a better answer after that because i've never been to like we go where do we go kevin what tracks are we going to evergreen <laughs> yeah <laughs> evergreen penticton speedway uh no there's apple valley which is grange yeah. there's honda muscle man there's adam's uh cart track oh you guys are drifting at adams yeah yeah i was <laughs> gonna say like that i was gonna say this to you today but i didn't and i forgot about it uh i feel like you should just fly out for either the tucson event or the that event like, that'd be cool adams no fuck that what's what's the track in tucson arizona I've never been in arizona it's the honda muscle man but i mean the adams one is like it's close to the airport it's like very you know what i mean it's it's very easy and accessible it's a shorter flight it's like blah blah you know oh there's also yeah. it's also grange grange would be sick yeah Great. yeah Grange is like a cooler track. Adams is pretty shit, man. I mean, Adams is pretty shit, but it, it pretty feels small. so cool because it feels like it's right in the city. It feels like it would be like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I don't know. Wait, but yeah, do whatever. And then, yeah, there's like the Utah Motorsports Complex. I swear there's a, a Horse Thief Mile, too. But There is what? Horse Thief. Yeah. yeah. On the 21st. Oh, horse Thief would be nuts. Yeah. You're doing Horse Thief. Yeah. We're I mean, that's doing what, it. That's what I mean. It feels like Horse Thief. And Muscle Man are both like bucket list tracks for me. So yeah. It's pretty sweet to be able to like drift them in one thing, one trip. And there's a yeah, like you're basically Vegas doing night like out. our Cali trip, but like like with all these other drifting people. Yeah. yeah. And it's like a drifting trip. It's wild times. I wild even told dude. I even I even told my wife that like next year or sorry 2023 new year's might be off the off the list because i might be drifting if there's an event on new year's eve i'm gonna be drifting yeah. like, what sick. do you mean like where like because they the do US? have like i mean they had super d yes, new year's yeah. eve and i've and they they used to have i swear they used to have pentic i'm not penticton uh a fucking cap d new year's eve events oh really I don't know. I mean, I know some place like they do yeah. have New Year's Eve events at, on like maybe it was Park or something. I don't know. But like they definitely have had yeah. those type of events. And I said, but, well, if there's yeah, going to be the, one. The Super D one they do every year. Yeah, exactly. Because Aaron goes down. So, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if I'm going to drive to fucking California to, for New Year's Eve, but like if it wasn't too far, I might. Because I, I hope to have my truck all sorted out and like being able to tow my car and shit this year. So, yeah, you know what my favorite thing is now? Macho Man Randy Savage <laughs> video <laughs> clips. They're so good, oh, man. They're so crazy. This is a little tidbit from old Ryan. Yeah. If you're ever feeling down about stuff, you just go find some old Macho Man Randy Savage, like pre wrestling, like interviews. And it'll it'll perk you right up. You'll feel yeah. right as rain at the end of the day. You will be the cream that rises to the top. <laughs> it'll be like a cup of coffee to your day. It's yeah. my favorite thing now. Love, Macho Man Randy Savage. <laughs> the problem 
with loving those is that the algorithm doesn't get that you're only there for macho man macho Randy man Savage. yeah exactly and they're like I here's some rick flair it. yeah and i'm like hey Rich i'm not here not for bad. rick flair so. yeah but i'm not here for that i want macho man I want hey man, macho I, man. I've, I've spent more money in spilt liquor in bars across the globe <laughs> 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 all right you know, kevin i was just gonna say what do you think about so i was talking about this like a serious question it's not that serious it's, it's just a like deep pauses there no 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 okay so bmws nissans okay we're into toyotas we already make toyota stuff or whatever whatever so, yeah so i was saying today so nissans are kind of cool whatever we like nissans sort of i like nissans but they don't have a huge amount of like, so you got the G series, you got the M series, and then like, I guess the Q is the successor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fucking it, man. And you got like, you know, VQ35, you know, whatever, VK45, basically you got like two, three motors, and then you got the VR. And then you got BMW. Every fucking car is rear wheel drive. Every fucking yeah. car uses the same parts. And like the cool thing about BMW too is like I feel like the drift crew and the stance crew are probably 50-50 for that entire mark. You know what I mean? Like how many stance BMWs you see? Like fucking tons. How yeah, many quite drift a few. BMWs you see? Tons. It's yeah, the drift like, BMWs are like definitely way older, but yeah, or but yeah. Wow. Not no, really, I, man. I mean, like no. fucking yeah, like the, the drift HQ BMW, the E46, is so fucking nice. Yeah. And then he also has like a, it's not even an E90, it's like the next one. He has like that brand new blue one that he drifts. Yeah, I think that's like the E95 or whatever. Is that No, it's the one after the 95 E80 something. So they went from 90 to 80? I don't know. <laughs> uh, oh, sorry, F80 something. F80, my yeah, E80. yeah, yeah, yeah. My car's an E80. <clears throat> but yeah, like, like... We should we should be getting on that this year. Like we kind of have the Nissan stuff already. Let's like do that because we already have the car and we have the parts and stuff. But like, yeah. I mean, the fact that like there's fewer cars and they have, you know, what I mean, it's almost a little bit of a better thing, though. You know, I mean, is it though? Well, I mean, now you have like a way like to have a complete market. You have less products to make, but but I mean, okay, so we can sell stance parts, to dudes in Poland or like. The BMW market, 100,000% is bigger. Like the yeah, BMW I mean, is like I mean, Chevy I, in all of I, fucking Europe. I care more about BMW than I do about Nissan. Yeah. Mm. Like we got to get on that. Uh, before getting the 18, I remember I was like, oh, I'm going to get an E46. Like, but that's the thing. 46s are also like they're all not busted yeah. now, but like you can get yeah, that's, 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 that's definitely old. Yeah. So much cheaper. Yeah, exactly. That's just old. And I mean, even just like for example, on B four. I mean, dude, I mean, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Like, it was ten years ago we made E ninety two co arms and a bunch of stuff. I know. Yeah, and Do it's not you... complicated stuff. It's very, very not complicated stuff. Yeah. Um, Do you think you'd be able to get into that market? Like, uh, absolutely. Here's a lesson I learned this year, and then we can apply this. And if you, it's good if you can. It's like. Drives just trying to find a way to justify that his BMW purchase, we can he can start charging the company for his parts. <laughs> no, maybe the next one, or the next one. But I mean, like yeah. I obviously spent the money to do the first Got one. Got a right? business plan. <laughs> um, I was going to say the thing that I've learned this last year is doesn't matter if you're the best at what you do, and it like like none that doesn't like how can I say this? Yeah, it doesn't matter if you're the best at what you do. It's kind of like, it doesn't, I don't know. Like there, there's something else to being successful. It's not just about being the best. It's like, it's like being known as part of it, you know, like. I, yeah, you got to be continually out there. Continually yeah, out there. Like, you got to so be like Coca-Cola, you, man. Yeah, like you can, you can build amazing parts for the BMW crowd, but if the BMW crowd isn't paying attention to you, it doesn't matter, you know, yeah. it's kind of. The thought and that I mean, is- I, know, I know we can get into that market because the other thing that I feel is that there's more of a crossover between Toyota and BMW, like the Nissan and BMW. I, I don't know, like it feels like with like 
realistically, if you look at like a Nissan, I mean, there's definitely like actual crossover now, though. Like, yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. But also, I what I'm saying is, if you look at like a quote unquote Nissan guy, they're really only about like S chassis and R chassis. That's it. Like you could take a Nissan guy. Yeah, and show there's a lot them. of Nissan dudes who like 350Zs and. Oh yeah, sorry, sorry, yeah, and then and then there's like G37s, the FM chassis cars, but like it, it pretty much like caps at FM chassis, and like maybe 370Zs now and stuff, but like it doesn't it doesn't cross over into the Infinities very much, and then it doesn't like you try to show them like a stage, yeah, and they're like, eh, that's cool, you know what I mean? But it's not like it's not like the BMW guys where it's like, it's an E92 tour. It's E90 touring. It's literally the same car, but it's just a wagon as opposed to the stage where it's like this weird fucked up car that they can't understand. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, then, and then also, it does, what I think, it does feel like, yeah, I know what you're saying where it's just like the, <clears throat> the BMW world feels like it's an easier crossover from Euro. You're just like, Oh, it's all the same car. It's like, Oh, the Euro has better diff or this and that. And it's, yeah, it's and like from also, Japan, it's just like, oh, I can't even fathom that. Yeah, and then also, uh, I feel like a lot of guys that are into like Toyotas and JZXs and stuff are kind of also or somehow related to guys that are into BMWs. I mean, I don't know. It's like an inline six sedan that's manual. Like, yes, yeah, so I mean, I feel like the Nissans are like they're kind of like like the straight and narrow and then the bmw guys are kind of like oh yeah toyotas are cool too and toyota guys are kind of like oh yeah bmws are cool too you know what i mean like not me no and also <laughs> they're just unbelievably like there are so many of them and they're so cheap like like have you found tra- have you found traditionally that people that buy cheap like buy cheap cars are willing to spend lots of money on parts yeah, I mean, look at Toyota guys. Yeah, but that's the thing. It's like they're not that cheap anymore. Yeah, like, to, yeah, they're not cheap anymore. Like, so what, spend a bunch of money on them. <laughs> that's what I mean. So you've already spent forty thousand dollars on the car. So what's you, spend, you what's, can like no, you justify can it? Justify spending another twenty thousand on the car. But I almost feel I could, like I almost feel like the BMWs have the advantage of you can buy the nice model which already comes with the engine and all that other shit, or you could just buy the Cressida version, which is like the fucking 320 or 318 or three bullshit version and do like a 1J and a 2J or a fucking V8 or whatever the fuck you want to do to it. But like the car itself is basically like previously Cressida money. Because Cressidas aren't really cool. They're just like a, like a, like a, a host for like a cool car. Whereas a JZX is like, you could get a cool one already. It's kind of like JZX is you buy a Tour V and it has all the shit or you buy the like Avant or fucking Exceed or whatever bullshit model. And then you, it, which is a host for all this cool shit that you're going to put into it. Right. I feel like it's like a, it's like a total crossover. And I mean, honestly, ah. like owning and driving and working on it, I think they're fucking really cool. So I, I want to kick feels- myself for not having one 10 years ago. I look obviously I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about but it also feels a little bit like a confirmation bias on your end you know like you're already like on it so you're already biased to the idea because you're doing it right now yeah I'm not saying that you're wrong yeah it felt as if BMWs made that jump because they became the cheap car so it was like oh why would I for the drift scene I don't know about stance cars but yeah. Why would I, you know, it's like goat will drift a BMW now, right? But that's what I'm saying. But that's a perfect not example. Not the 100. And perfect like, example of a crossover. Goat fucks yeah. with BMWs, always has. Goat fucks with Toyotas. He's always, he's always fucked with both. Yeah. Even fucking Gilbert has had a Toyota, a BMW and shit. Yeah. So you think that's the next move? I was going to ask. I can put this all on the podcast. Um, if we're at the start of a new year, what are you thinking? And is this what you're thinking? Or is this just a Gerard thought? Where's Kevin land on this? Uh, yeah, no, I'm down. I, like, like I said, I'm down with BMWs almost more so than Nissan's. Yeah. A uh, uh, local importer of ours recently posted a 
an R34 four door. And I was just like, yo, like, that's kind of sick. Like I could get down with that. And that might be, that might be an interesting car to get me into Nissan's like, yeah. <laughs> Do you mean Nissan's or BMWs? I missed that. Well, sorry, it's an R34 four door, but yeah. Oh, an R34. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, and I was just like, oh, that's not like an unrealistic price. And like, that would be a really cool car I feel to have. And it'd definitely be a departure from the normal for me. But like, yeah, I do yeah. think I'd, I do think I would have a BMW. So for those cars. Just get this though. From 2003 to 2008, in Japan, this is just on B4. There are 736 one series and 390, I'm oh, sorry, 2800 three series cars. Only five series. Talking five about series, there's 2400. <laughs> so between those three, like a one series, three series, and, and five series, there's like 5,000 BMWs on auction right now. Between are the nice people... models and the and the shit models. Bringing in BMWs from Japan. They fucking should be. Gerard is. Yeah, this yeah, is again. I'm, I'm this, is the Gerard, this is the Gerardism, though. It's like Gerard finds a thing and then expects everyone. Again, but, I'm I mean, not people are already into fucking... BMWs. I feel like. I'm yeah, but also, like, no, but like, you know, people also into 180s and 240s and. Laurels and all. I mean, when you go, when you go to okay, so when you go to villains, though, you're like, man, there were so many fucking clapped out shitty BMWs. Yeah, right. Because that's like a cheap car that you can afford to throw into a wall. Right. But why don't you? Why don't like? I'm sure there are places like, for example, Poland that build sick BMWs. Yeah. All the next level cars. I'm not saying all the next level cars are sick. I think maybe what we would need to happen. Is like okay, so the drift community does what it does, and helps annihilate a population of rear wheel drive yeah, cars. So all, exactly, all the BMWs are about to be destroyed. Like they're all. There's so many more of them to destroy. You don't think there was a shit ton of two forties, and they all got destroyed, and now they're twenty thousand dollars. I mean, so you think there's as many two forties as there are like peasant ass fucking three series BMWs? No, well, uh, no, yeah. no. I mean, they're they're literally, literally every those were a peasant ass car before. Like, yeah, but, but they're think, also a sports car. But think it's fifteen a, years it's, ago, it's not an everyday car that people drive. Like, you're not I mean, you don't have a family like, and have a one eighty SX or whatever. I mean, definitely I mean, people did the, back in the yeah, day. Man, people they they didn't have giant SUVs. People just had a family and they put a fucking tiny little car seat in the back where the kid like didn't have a car seat after five years old i mean and, like yeah that was how it was i i, I do agree that like people drove more like ridiculous shit back then but there were still sedans back then like somebody who has a family isn't buying a fucking 240 sx versus no but if they had whatever a 40, they probably wouldn't sell it because they had one child i don't think but yeah 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 yeah, yeah. this fucking car is eight hundred dollars like you uh, you know like i'm of the age <laughs> i remember riding in the back of a pickup you know yeah, yeah, yeah no for sure i have pictures of my sisters and brothers there are fucking seven of them and they have a single cab pickup I'm like where did they ride obviously in the back like yeah yeah exactly Jeez. uh like that, okay so i'm not disagreeing with you i'm just being devil's advocate just so you know just, live your goddamn life do <clears> whatever you want I can't follow you down this dark hole though. Of BM- no, I'm joking. <laughs> like just a quick, just a quick thing here. Like for example, let's say, okay, I bought my Cresta. My Cresta is cool because it's a JZX 100 and it's like the lineage and the X chassis and this and that. Mm-hmm. It's a mm-hmm. 1997 and it was fucking, you know, $900. So landed, whatever. This is a fucking 2008 car for fucking $800. It's literally like 10 years newer. And has yeah. like better technology and better everything and better brakes and more. Well, it obviously doesn't have better everything, or else it wouldn't be fucking that price, buddy. Well, I'm just saying, like, if you're gonna take out, like, like if we took everything we're doing to the Cresta and did it to this car, it it would, you know what I mean? Like, in in the end, you theoretically could end up with a better car, maybe not a cooler car, but yeah, I was gonna say, which car is cloutier at the end? Probably the 100. Obviously, that's why. Which car has a higher ride height, bro? Yeah. Which car is more replaceable? Like, would I want to smash a fucking shitty 3 Series into the wall? 
or a fucking JX100 into a wall or a Cresta. Yeah, All right. Cresta. So you buy a three series for 800 bucks. Yeah. Okay. What am I, what year am I looking at? 2008. For... I'll send you the link right now. Yeah. Send me a link. So you get a 2008. I don't feel like this is going to win me over as much as the time we were looking at Lexuses. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> Like that was the best. Well, see, um, I mean, that's the thing that I'm learning too. Is like I, I had a huge like hate for BMWs. Like the hate was so strong that I could not even give a shit about them. But like now that I'm working on, it, I'm like, man, that's really cool. That's really cool. That's really simple. That's really cheap. That's really, and it's like obviously that's why people fuck with them. Like there are literally. Dude, Neander you were just complaining plugs. about the fucking like the spark plugs, and you had to get like, get the gasket kit from Europe. And, but I did, and then. Like, I, the gas it was like $35. Took like a Good week. Wait. Okay. Uh, anyways, but I'm just that's, saying yeah, like, that's not that bad. The, what I'm saying is like because Car, these cars are all banged up. Yeah. Dude, have you seen my Cresta? <laughs> okay. So you get this car for 800 bucks. It's an automatic rear wheel drive. Yeah. So you're going to convert it to a five speed. Well, we would just take everything that we're putting in the Cresta. I'm not saying I'm doing this. I'm just saying like this is. No, what, I know. But you could. But yeah, it's so like all right. So you much? make you make every single part for the three series already, so it doesn't really cost much. Right. You already have the motor and transmission, so it doesn't really cost you anything. Right. Then you get cheap aero and wide body. You have sick wheels already that are five by one twenty or whatever you need. Uh, so it doesn't. It's it's really nothing because you already make all the parts. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And I, I'll show you a one of these done up and then like now yeah you you send me a done up one why can't i just get it with a manual transmission out of the box well no you can see that's the beauty is you could buy a three three thirty i like that gerard's Gerard's already revealing our 2024 plans we're going to build twin bmws for 2024 oh i don't like any of this the thing is is as much as i look at this car i just can't get into like i I don't. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that like. Send me a cool one. Send me okay, okay, the coolest okay. fucking one I can see. I just start drifting Subarus if this was the option. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, like the only benefit to having this is that you could tell people in Vancouver you drive a BMW, and then they would think. No, because like, the, the, the benefit to this is that you're now selling parts. All oh day no! Long, I meant all... for me as a customer. Oh. Yeah, as long as you break that, as long as you break that market. Because now you're, look, this is real shitty. No, I'm not going to say it that way. Okay, now you're asking the people in that segment to shift their attention to like Serial 9. And is Serial 9 in their vocabulary? Right? Does that make sense? Like, we talked to Quinn and Quinn saying like, you guys are actually like very well respected in Japan. And like, you go on any group and people are talking about like JZXs or JZSs, and they're like, who does the best for this? Like suspension parts. And it's like, if you have the money, it's serial nine. If you want to just like fuck around and find out, you spend less money and you buy some like other dumb shit. But serial nine's the best. And you're not wrong. Like all the things that you said logistically make sense, but it just doesn't light a fire for me, you know? And that's that's just it. I I yeah. It checks all the boxes. I'm just like, not loving it. Everything you said makes sense. And I'm sure if I had one and I had to build it, I could build it and like it. And I would probably, you could probably okay, even drive that in Vancouver and get away with it. I, I, I am imagine speaking if you had from a one. more of a business standpoint regarding these. Cause I mean, I don't like love BMWs either. I'm, you know, I've always hated them, but I'm just saying like, if we're going to move to a new, like a new car, it does make sense to move to a car that like bazillions of them were sold all over the world. And like, okay, if I type in, let's see here, even just E87, which is my car, 120,000 posts. Type in like E91, 209,000 posts. E91 Touring, which is just the wagon, 45,000 posts. It's like like 1. I dude, I like I, okay, I'm gonna posts. go to bed. Like if we're just gonna talk about the amount of posts that like yeah, I I do think that and again I'm not a, a businessman, I'm a businessman. No, uh it's still the conversion rate, still is like can you can what is the amount of people you think you convert 
But I'm just saying, okay, out of out of 1.4 million E90 fucking cars, how many fucking arms do you think you could sell? You you type in E90 in Instagram, every car is stanced. Like 75% of these cars are fucking stanced out. Even if you I, took 20% of the 75% of the stanced out ones, like they could be having our arms. They could be something if they, some serial if they line know fuck about shit. If they know about your arms and if the people in that scene are willing to vouch for your arms. But that's right? why you have to like, build a sick car. You have to build then, a sick BMW. But this is the other thing that I just said. Is it doesn't like, have to be a drift car is what I'm saying. Hear me out. And I know this isn't a lot of fun. So I'm sorry, Kevin. Um, again, what I was saying is like, it doesn't matter if you're the best at what you do. You could build a sick car, but you still got to like, Get the buy-in from everyone else to share that car. Your following is a like you guys own a like, and you own it, but it is like, like a niche segment of the market, and you dominate that part of it, and it's great. But now you're asking other people to like buy in that aren't in that segment of the market. So that requires probably a different marketing plan and a different way to like reach out to those people. But we would still have to do that with the Nissans, anyways. Because we don't have but that. I mar- also market feel yet. like that's a little bit of. I actually, I know what you're saying, but I still think that's a little bit of like a lesser jump because it's like. Yes. I think it's definitely I a came lesser from reach, a but yeah, I also agree that like, you know, you got to step out of your niche at some point or like move forward. Yeah, for sure. Um, but yes, I also it's, think that like the Nissan, it's like a. It's like you're selling to the sister of the, your main customer now. It's it's not a big reach. And then also, I mean, I guess for my, in my opinion, it's like the crossover between like literally every car guy we know almost either has or is into both cars, like Mickey into BMWs. Like, yeah, it's only like a partially Vancouver a thing. Because there's a million BMWs in Vancouver. But there's a million. Okay, and what, about, what about the next thing. level guys? The next level guys. But it's How also many a Nissans status do they have? Thing here. That's yes, because it's Europe though. Like, but they know, also have Altezas, and he has a JZX100, and he has a Supra. Got the Supra and the Altezas are cooler. Yeah, because uh, he, he probably cared about those cars and sought them out. Or, but I yeah. mean, Altezas are probably very prevalent. Right, sure. but I'm saying, um, I'm saying, in their arsenal, they probably have like a 180 or whatever, which is like obviously the quintessential Nissan. But it's not like they're having like G35 sedans and like and like fucking 350Zs and all that other shit. Like you know what I mean? They just have. I feel like the. The coolest okay. factor of a BMW is more than a 350Z. Hear me like out. 350Z is a drift car and kind of can be cool, but like because you know you can get a wagon or a sedan or a coupe or whatever in the in the fucking BMW, it has a higher potential coolness if right. that's what you care about. Hear me out on this. This is my <laughs> my thought. And I think this is what's informing in a bit. Is okay. Holy so, shit. What? happened uh i was just the uh, uh, i mean i mean, i was just searching bmw on b ford 2007 max year there was twelve thousand cars that's what i, I said I, I put it to manual it's it's 200 cars that's what i'm saying yeah so ten thousand of them are auto only 200 are manual Dude, it's, type in fucking manual Nissan and, and now, or manual Toyota. Just you're only gonna find high aces and like fucking pro boxes or some shit. This is a, this is an X3, X3 manual. Yeah, diesel. there's X3 manuals, diesels. That's crazy. And X1s. Yeah, the most of them are X3s, and then yeah. BMW and Minis now. There's nothing. Yeah, there's that's, not even that's one of the problems with typing in BMWs because Mini comes up. Dude, there's yeah. like not even a single fucking BMW sedan manual. Not that many. They're they're going to be higher models. Like well, yeah, no, annual. I, what, why is it showing me 2019 when I already put in 20? I've already put in a max year and it's showing me years that are out of the. Anyway, weird. But I mean, that's that's just the thing. Is like the track that even I guess if you wanted to keep the stock engine, the transmissions are fucking two or three hundred dollars. They're not two thousand dollars or one thousand dollars. Yeah, I mean, you still need to do a million other things. You probably need to like reflash the ECU and like all sorts of shit. It's like a, it's a 2010 no, sure. car, you know. I'm not saying it's fucking cake, man. You know? Yeah, but I mean, 
it's not like I'm building a fucking, it's not like I have a tour V that has a drop in ECU and K manual. You know what I mean? Like, no, but I mean, you also <laughs> have all the knowledge experience and already parts just sitting there. I sure as fuck guarantee we can do it. I do think it's like a kind of just like a rich kid Vancouver thing to have a, like a BMW as your daily kind of feels that way. But I mean, but that's the thing is like, that's the image, right? Like, I mean, if you talk to Kat or like even Rita, she's like, I will never own a BMW because it's like the image of it is this. And I'm thinking in my head, like they're literally the cheapest cars you could possibly buy on fucking marketplace because they're kind of shitty. But also it's like, they're so common and prevalent yeah. that they, that, that they are cheap. It's yeah, like, if, exactly. if there was like eight BMW sold a year in Vancouver, they would be really expensive. Mm-hmm. When there's 8,000 BMWs or more sold a year in Vancouver, then they're cheap because there's so many used in the market all the time. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. Right. Whatever. I'm going to build mine. I'm going to sell it. I'm going to buy another one and put the 19s on it. And and then I think it's going to be a little bit more sick. Okay. That's your test. That Here's actually a good test. You occasionally drop in posting about your BMW. on People Super like Nine. it, though. People are stoked on it. But compare it to the JZS and the JZS. I mean, that's that's different, though, man. Compare like, it to the that's Blitz. That's different, though, man. No, but I'm just yeah, saying, yeah, you, can't, yeah. you can't You can't compare. Can't compare. Like, no, but listen. You can't, you can't compare can't, a car to a car. Go on. You can't compare a fucking non-modified stock 118 to, like, a highly modified fucking drifting yeah. JZS with 600 horsepower and, like, the most ridiculous wheels on the fucking planet. Like, it, it's the like, most ridiculous eh? no i'm just saying on like, the planet eh? it's like as a, a <laughs> that's example. a pretty big step. yeah, yeah, yeah. You you're I mean, coming like... out swinging 2023 is gerard's year <laughs> uh, the 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 test if money was no option i would ask you to build a um like build the, the bmw that, build. that like yeah build the cool bmw and then build a cool JZX100 or put it next to the, you know, or even like an old like photo of the Aristo and then figure out which one has, gets the engagement. But I mean, that, that, that also it doesn't matter. The Aristo has gone, bro. And also, I Ryan, know, that, but that doesn't make the most sense because we're moving forward, right? We're not like, like, so I have yeah. like the, you know, Toyota engagement is here, BMW engagement's here, but it's like at some point, those are going to match if not you know what i mean like maybe we'll lose some Hopefully. toyota people maybe we'll lose some toyota people but we'll gain so many more bmw people and Hopefully. it's like like i want to make money man i don't like really give a fuck like if, no, if I, I offend toyota guys you know what i mean like i agree i just sent you two you. really cool Yo, I you're, you're really offending cool. me i uh, check your face negative, your negative attitude no me you don't want to check his facebook that I am. It's fine. I don't. I, I already, yeah, and I already, I already seen it before you told me you sent it. But yeah, I mean, honestly, that's the best one thus far. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a moving it's an shot. E36. That's part. why. But look, in an ideal world, absolutely. Like in an ideal world, everything you just pitched to me is what I would want for you. That's in an ideal situation. That's all. Right. Then you get into the real world, and then. You add the fucking Gerard avant-garde factor of the like the string, like. But then I could just make wagons. I could drift wagons, and then to be like that would be the different part. You know what I mean? It's still avant-garde Gerard is the thing, you know. And then that's the avant-garde bit. Okay. Well, you're not not always the common man. I know you like to think you're the common man, but sometimes you're you're out there. You're, and you, you know what? At the end of the day. You're probably right because I actually I fully think that you're pretty much always right about these things, but it takes everyone so much longer to catch up to you. That I, mean, I feel like I'm catching up with everyone else. Like these cars are already popular. They're yeah, not popular with yeah, us. But with, uh, not, yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're popular, but now the question is, is like to get that to make that trans transition and, that you think you already and, and what kind of so one of the things i think is like a kind of a key element too is like bmws are cool you know they're done in europe and this and that and i feel like when people see say example like a japanese influenced bmw like you see vsks on a bmw and everyone loses their fucking minds 
you see Riga, you guys saw Riga's on a BMW and you're like, this is way better than the fucking BBSs or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, we were picking and then it was like, you know, like, but I'm saying that's that, that triggered you guys. So like if we one hurts see, the least, is what if serial <laughs> nine was to like have this style of BMW, that was very serial nine or Japanese or whatever the fuck it may be, then that could be the, that could be the play. It could, again, I don't have a crystal ball, so I it very well could be. You could be absolutely right. I'm just being the other side of that conversation to say, like, in an ideal world, you do that and you make a bajillion dollars <laughs> and everyone goes on B forward and they all import cars and everybody. And they That's all only for Canadians, though. Like, so. Yeah, but still. And then but also, how cool would it be to have a little dealership thing. here where we build like sick ass like right hand drive BMWs and like all the rest of US and stuff, like look at our cars and be like, fuck, those are sick. Like a right hand drive, I don't know, like one series fucking slam cambered kind of drift car. Like that's pretty fucking cool. I've never seen that. Like you just buy the six speed one of my car, the six speed six cylinder one, dump it, yeah. put put the fucking nineteens on it. And like put some bullshit body like a uh, lip kit on it, and like I don't know, take it around the fucking mission raceway a few times. Do that. Mm. Do a burnout. Do a cooker. All right. Than the one you <laughs> sent me. All right, that's what I'm doing. Good. Doing it. I gotta sell <laughs> this first one though. I gotta change the fucking vacuum pump on it. <laughs> All right, Kevin, are you getting a BMW? Is that in your? Favorite? No. No, Aaron's buying all no, the no. Toyotas. He's buying the newer Toyotas. Yeah, <laughs> none of this makes. I just like. Yeah. I just no. I just like. That's the thing is like I can't deny the value in it, and I think that's how we got to Toyota stands in the first place. Right, and now the value in Toyota is, is, is not like there. Depleted. It's ridiculous. Yeah, right. yeah. Like I, I just sent Ryan like a, a 1990 Toyota Mark II. 7200 before shipping or a 2006 manual three series right which is a hundred dollars cheaper before shipping right <laughs> right Although like, i do kind of like that mark ii you know <clears throat> I'll yeah, send you like, like 16 years newer like yeah. manual like like you know if you ask somebody hey would you want a car that's manual and 16 years newer for a hundred dollars more, like who in the yeah. right mind, you know? Even if you have to fix a few oil leaks here and there, <laughs> Dude, this one has like a carbon fiber diffuser. It's got tains. It's got you know what I mean. Like it's... I'll send you this one car. Hold up, because this is the car that I was like looking at, and I was like, so oh. far Kevin's winning at the send me BMW. <laughs> <laughs> um, Only because I said but... a car that countered it. <laughs> like a Japanese yeah. variant. Well, and, I, and it was blue, and it had a manual transmission. Ah, um, the blue. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. And now uh, I figure out. Uh, now I know how to get Ryan. Yeah. No, oh, is that like an Aris? Anyway, well, this one's blue um, as well. <laughs> and it has, and it has emotions. No, Gerard, this is not as good. <laughs> it has emotions on it. It's pretty sick, actually. I can buy it. Oh, I don't like this. Just look at the side it's shot. Just, the carbon hood makes it look too. shitty, eh? Yeah, I mean, it's, I don't even know if it's a carbon hood. Just black. Oh, maybe it's that's yeah, like yeah. an M M Sport. It's M. a carbon. It's super venti. No, I would go with the one that Kevin sent. Unless this one's faster. Uh, it might be, yeah, this one's a one thirty. So yeah, it would be faster. And it's an and I mean, it's not even that expensive. Like fifteen k. None of this gets me as excited as still as our fucking conversation about like all the LSs in 3GS, you know, that conversation to me was super like, whoa. And this is like <coughs> a place where I would reluctantly go, it feels like, you know, like maybe gun to my head if I had to, all my friends are doing it, I guess. <laughs> yeah, but, unfortunately, I'm already there. I, I have a zero interest in those fucking LSs and GSs. I, I tried, like, like, should I get a fucking Mark X, a Crown, a fucking GS? And I'm just like, I, I, I just, no, it's, I'm done with those cars. Can't, Boo! Even as a daily, it's like I just don't, I just don't want any of that. Like yeah, it's I nice, hate, yeah, but that's it. It's a nice, fast, nice car. 
I don't know. Yeah, all right. Do whatever you want to. <laughs> I've said my things. You know how as if everything works according to plan, I think it's a great idea. Okay. If you have a few hiccups, then I start to worry. <laughs> <clears throat> Who has a nice BMW that you can share? I mean, see, that's the thing. It's like, for example. Obviously, it's Gerard. So nobody has a nice BMW. <laughs> I have to sell the Aristo, which I don't. Then, yeah, that's like an okay thing. I definitely, it doesn't make me feel the same. I guess <laughs> I would be excited for people to think that I was rich or well off. Jokes it's on funny that, that your not. head goes there. Like you, like it, that that thought doesn't even cross my mind. Like the fact that what people would think about me for having or driving a BMW. I don't know. Man, I mean, honestly, like I, I, I kind of, no, no, I feel the same way as Ryan because, like, I'm looking at all these cars and I'm just like, yeah, like I kind of get what Ryan means. It, like, it doesn't really excite me. Like, I'm looking at the price tag and I'm just like, I get it makes sense, but like, I guess like the heart wants what the heart wants. But I'm like. I guess it would be cool to be driving like a new or BMW where like, you know, normal people. Yeah. Like normal people think that you're like, it's a really nice car or something, but you're just like, well, yeah. You know, as opposed I, to uh, like your crown or something or. Yeah. You, yeah, exactly. Like, you yeah. Know. Uh, this goes back to what we said at the very beginning. It was like the kind of the beauty of Ken block in that sense for me was it was the easiest thing to explain to people what I was into, like in the vicinity of, hey, I've shot something that Ken Block has done and they would know what it is. They know what it <clears throat> signified and what it meant. If yeah. I explain to someone what an Aristo is, and then, so like me explaining that I'm into cars to someone now is explaining what an Aristo is. So first starting with a GS, <laughs> then saying it's a Japanese version of it, then saying it has a better engine than what came in in North America, then explaining that mine was swapped to a five speed and then like them still not giving a shit and then showing them a picture. And then they're like, Oh yeah, that's kind of neat. But why is it so low? Whereas like, there is still that like sense of owning a BMW or a Euro car has, ha I don't know. Yeah. It's just an easier translation. It's like, Oh yeah, you must care. You have, you have a BMW. Oh, you have an M car. Oh, okay. Like it's just like in the But that's only if people know what an M car even is. Yeah, not everybody I mean, knows what I don't an even, M car is. No, but I don't even think no. a lot of people care. They just hear BMW and they think like nice, classy, fancy. But also like, I don't know, like a 2006 BMW definitely looks newer, more modern, more expensive than a 30-year-old Toyota no like yeah, are yeah. Not, i mean it, are it is not. newer so you know what I mean? that's yeah, it. Yeah. It, look, it looks like classier and more expensive bar not you know yeah whether it is or not but then like yeah you get to that weird the like, crossover where you see someone driving an a86 corolla and you're like holy shit they're driving a thirty-five thousand dollar car and it's like unless you know like you're just like look at that person in their shitty old car like yeah yeah Hmm. Then when they're parked next to each other, which one do you care more about? <clears throat> well, that's like Skylines right now, dude. They're 500 grand, like a million dollars. Like, like what the fuck? Like, you know what I mean? Like, like the value's not there. Like, is, is a fucking R34 GTR, like, Neurospec really worth a million dollars? Like, not no. really. 500 but, grand? But to quote some people that I met once on a podcast... Things are worth what people are willing to pay. But so that's I, what I mean. Like, is like a Hemi Cuda really worth like two hundred thousand dollars? Like, mm, I, I mean, it's I'd probably, probably worth quite a bit more than that now. But yeah, or I mean, I don't know. Like, I'd probably take the R thirty four GTR over uh, whatever. You know. No. <laughs> but I mean, maybe that's because it means more to me in my timeline. I feel that yeah. like also maybe because I'm like. I was gonna say, I'm uh, newer than that. <laughs> I'm younger than the cars that came out in that generation. I can be like, well, the R34 is already a better car. So why would I want to spend, you know? But maybe like the next generation will be the same way. And they're like, why would I spend, why would I spend $400,000 on a Toyota Supra when I could have this other car that's like infinitely better performing, you know? And means more to me. 
But yeah, who knows? I I'll I'll leave with this. Uh, this is because it's getting <clears> over. <throat> We've been talking for a long time. It feels like, and I know I say a lot of shit that makes me sound shallow, like oh, this person would think that and that, but just thinking of like my experience and explaining things about myself to random people. Um, it feels like switching to a BMW would be to some degree, this sounds really ridiculous, like an overhaul of a giant part of my personality. Or not like a giant part of my personality, but like I've spent the last 20 some years being enamored with Japanese cars and parts of Japanese culture. And then it's like, now I have to shift all of these things that I've fundamentally believed for 20, 20 years, 20 plus years actually to be like now i'm totally into this totally different thing and maybe it is like an old dog new trick thing and it's hard but yeah it just feels like it'd be such a weird shift from a personality sense to like teach yourself to be enamored with those i guess maybe i just i i don't have the same depth of like no you uh, don't we've talked about this all the time you, yeah you're shallow you don't as care fuck. about that part <laughs> I just want to experience more cars. You want to experience more. And I kind of, I love what I love, you know, and I've, I've, I've built, I think a I love what my I love. Identity around. And what I love is an inline six manual sedan that I can drift. Yeah. Okay. And so BMW ticks that box a lot. And well, and where I'm out of Toyotas, they can do that at this point, unless I'm modifying them to be that way. Like the 18 crown is a V6 auto and it always will be in, you know, mm-hmm. and like when, what's, you know, when can I buy an inline six manual rear wheel drive Toyota? Yeah. It's like, why don't they put the B58 in? Like they should bring whatever the newest crown is, put the B58 in that. chassis or the IS yeah, or and whatever. Make a fucking, even so if it's automatic. The crown's like a crossover. That's what I mean. Even if it was an automatic fucking manually shifted eight speed with the b58 and a sedan that would be mildly exciting but like way too exciting for toyota yeah you can't do yeah. that you might as well just buy the bmw equivalent which you can buy you can buy the b58 engine in every fucking bmw of that year you need, yeah you can buy it in that like x4 thing x3 x4 x5 yeah. like literally you can have a crossover an suv a two-door a four-door a fucking wagon with that same engine all right crazy. i will never i'll I, look i won't fully commit to anything if you want to build a bmw <clears throat> and do that if kevin ends up drifting one what choice will i have but to take photos <laughs> of it mm-hmm. so but i think okay so you. part of the, the appeal to me is the pro how prolific they are in japan so i feel like there's always been a weird connection of like the Euro and the Japan and the yeah. crossover is BMW. It's Porsche, but yeah. Well, there's Porsche, but I mean, yeah, Porsche for sure. Porsche too, but like, and I there's mean, also like Mercedes. Porsche is the yeah. next level, but also Mercedes doesn't have as many yeah, there's sporting less, cars. Less Mercedes. Yeah. So like the coolest BMWs are Japanese influenced BMWs or, or like the Euro, the Polish. That was one thing that I always thought was cool. It was like, yeah, like Japanese styled. Like Euro European cars, cars. Yeah. right? <clears throat> okay. Well, I feel like we haven't really resolved anything. Except Gerard wants to build a BMW now. So for those keeping score, Gerard's gone from AMGs to Porsche. I can't to afford BMWs. AMGs, man. I was like fucking in Dream World <laughs> back then. Like, I'm starting and... with these like shitty thousand dollar BMWs. I'm gonna build a cool one. I so cool. I will be more open to it. Honestly, just because it's like, if you can convince Kevin to do it, if Kevin does it, because like Gerard, <laughs> I'm you'll the, try I'm the litmus test. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. like Gerard, you'll try anything once. But like, if you can get Kevin into it and Kevin like vouches for it, I feel like that's kind of like a <laughs> litmus test to like, oh yeah, that's a solid choice. So with that, I guess maybe that's what we can possibly look forward to in the next few years. I don't know. Um, Hard anyway, 
So that was a fun go. I feel like we a- answered some questions and then really got into the, the <laughs> meat of PMWs. Uh, so no guests next time, but a guest after next time. Is that right? Who knows? Guest next. Okay. We'll never know. All right. Are you listening now? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, All right. well, thanks for listening, everyone. Always appreciate it. Thanks for all the questions. Thank you very much. Much obliged. Until next time. Until we meet again. Until we meet again. To you and you and you. All right. Okay. Bye, everyone. See you. Bye. Thanks for listening to Serial Podcast 9.